No, I'm not, I'm I'm kidding. I'm dressed. I'm ready to go. We only got like what, like 15 minutes before Malachi's toy box. And then no more Flippy Monkey. Oh no. Okay, so this is Stellaris. <clears throat> I've been loving this game for months now. Uh, Jake has been loving this game for months now. Uh, music's great. Game's great. I'm gonna go into a new game. I was creating a race. But I don't see him here, so we're going to create a new one. And if that takes the entire stream, deal with it. So, what is this game? It's a 4X game, which means uh, you're zipping through uh, time, but you're creating these huge galactic civilizations, and uh, you're trying to either conquer the galaxy or, well, conquer the galaxy, really. I mean, come on, that's how it works. And so, you can do that through several means, military, uh, political, economic. Uh, although economy is not totally fleshed out yet in this game, uh, that's fine. I'm pretty sure these guys, Paradox, they make uh, Universalis, Europa Universalis, and Hearts of Iron, which are amazing games. Uh, I think they're incredible. Um, and I think some of these guys might have worked on Sword of the Stars 1 and 2. I hope so, because those were two of my favorite 4X games, uh, pretty much of all time, next to uh, Sins of the Solar Empire. But enough of that jazz, I was going to create a snail race. Um, Dis, I like that. Their name is called the Dis. We're going with that. Uh, their biography will be, uh, we want all the shells. All of them. There. So that's, that's their goal now. Um, this, is, this is how the seven days in the Bible took place. All right, so... Let's see, we want them... See, he was just going, like, back then, they were just like, oh, humanoid. No, 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 we're going mo molluscoid. Mollusk. So, I guess molluscoid. Um, let's see. Fourth of the fifth, gob, gob, new planet, naf, oven. Binju, ooh, 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 Um. Exog. Ragani. Yeah, that's good. Those are good names for planets. Let's go from there. Uh, all right, so what did we do? We just created what they looked like. We created their name, and then we came up with a list of like randomly generated names that the computer will come up with that kind of fit their species, if you will. It's all conjecture, but anyway. Um, and so now we're moving into trait. And the reason why I stopped here, because these are important. So these are snails, right? What are snails good at? Uh, let's see here. Snails... Uh, what does this give me? Uh, it gives me 15 minerals. They're intelligent. Snails are intelligent, sure. Let's put intelligent. Uh, so now I have no points. So now we got to change. Let's see. Snails would be slow breeders, right? I would think they'd be slow breeders. They could also be slow learners, but we already have intelligence, so we're okay there. They're definitely going to be strong. Okay, so we're going to have strong. Possibly. There might be another one. Uh, sedentary, yes. Snails are definitely sedentary. Repugnant, nah, snails can be cute. I mean, look at this guy, he's kind of cute. Uh, conformists, no, no, no. Snails, they live on the edge. Um, enduring, what does that give me? Plus 15 to life, leader lifespan. Okay, that's going to be important, I'll tell you why later. So we're going to do that. Uh, what else can we, oh, we only have four points, that's it. Okay, so this is what we chose. We chose intelligent, right, because we want a little boost to our research, engineering, physics, and society output. That's great. Uh, they're slow breeders because they're snails, right? They're strong because of their shells, and they have lots of. They get plus five percent to their minerals because you know, snails are really good at utilizing their minerals. Look at that. I mean, they got this great shell on their back. Uh, sedentary kind of goes with the territory of being a snail, and enduring. That means that they live fifteen years longer than the average, whatever the average would be. So maybe a hundred, hundred fifteen. Okay, so that would be a good snail race. Let's move on from there. Ah, uh, ruler. Uh, female, male, doesn't really matter because they're snails, don't really care. So we're going to go random here for female, male, Staglor, Alarig, Athog, Flurma. Flurma is actually a Gethmar, Shushk, Glorim, Glosh. I like Glosh. It's a good name. Uh, color variant. Oh, wow, we're getting crazy here. Let's go with the, 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 oh, I like that one. Room. What room would a snail be living in right now? Huh. That's pretty snaily. I think that's pretty snaily right there. All right. We're going to go next. 
name and class. Okay, so this is going to be their home world. And what kind of planets they're going to be most likely to colonize. Like what they favor the most. And so they're snails, so we're going to do oceanic. Because they're water snails, right? I know everybody's thinking about the gooey snails that come out when it, like, you know, the bunkers go on in the morning and the snails come out and you're crunching all the way to your car. Now, these are underwater snails. Uh, the Dominic, I could call them the Dominicans. No, let's not do that. Uh, Wegola, no. Con Aramis, no. Lagon, look, that sounds like a disease. Sigia, no. Uthab, no. Havo, no. Elam, no. Sigia again. Pundia. Sondrissa, no. Lad. L Laginchu, Laginchu, Karab, Ur, Idra, Grawl. I like that. Grawl. All right, starting system. We can do random, Sol, Deneb, or random. Uh, we're just going to go with uh, random because I don't want to be stuck in, like, our solar system or some strangers. All right, so city appearance, muscloid, molluscoid, molluscoid. I want to say muscloid, but it's mo molluscoid. Ah, oh, the brain works in weird ways, the tongue even stranger. Okay, so they're not going to be a hive mind. Authoritarian, xenophile, pacifist. Now, these are ethics. Now, you're going to have to pardon me here, because my ethics have nothing to do with reality. They have everything to do with how this game works. So if I pick, like, neo-fascist, materialistic zombies, there's a reason for that. That's because they're successful <laughs> at conquering the galaxy in a particular fashion. Uh, militaristic, spiritual, okay. Uh, you know, spiritualists, because they have a lot of time on their hands. They're not going anywhere. Militarist or Z or authoritarian, like a caste system. I don't see snails being very, very militaristic. I see them being more authoritarian. Uh, you know, because I mean, like, think about it this way, right? Your shell is your status, all right? Um, and that can be achieved through uh, spiritual reflection. Right? And they can, like, you know, based on how spiritual they are, their shells could be more. In anyway, I get way into this. It's terrible. Imperial or dictatorial? No, imperial. See, I don't like dictators, but imperial is different because it's, like, decadent and, like, you know, people are going to be living really well and other people are going to be living really badly. Dictatorship is, like, one guy and everybody else is a jerk. Um, so you got more people living well over here. Hive mind is the best, but, you know. We're humans. We're, like, totally against that sort of thing. Uh, environmentalists? Uh, you know, they could be. I got two picks for their... Now, do they have to have slaves? Slave unrest. They see they do it. So let's go with militaristic, just because I don't want to do the whole slave thing. I have a whole other race of bugs that have slaves, and they're bug slaves, and just I don't need more slaves. So we're going to go with this. We're going to go with... Uh, well, wait a minute. No, I don't see. I don't like xenophile or xenophobe. I really have no opinion on foreigners. They can come and go as they please. Okay, so we can go oligarchic, which is a little better. I like that. We'll go with oligarchy. Um, yeah, it's so much better than a democracy. And way better than dictator. Yeah, we'll go with oligarchy. All right, you got to fight in the arena. That's the, that's the deal here. Police state, no, already live in one. Environmentalist, no, I've known too many. They're annoying. Uh, distinguished admiralty, that's... Okay, cutthroat politics, monthly influence, huh? They are oligarch. I don't know. Let's keep going. Corporate dominion, empire energy generation, huh? Interesting. Shadow council, election influence cost. Ooh, we were just talking about the Illuminati and ultra spiritual. Maybe I could. Be, maybe I could be the Illuminati. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Uh, mining guild. Empire mineral production, that's a little obvious. Efficient bureaucracy. Uh, core sector systems, plus two, that's going to help in the long run. Or actually immediately, not necessarily in the run. It means I could colonize a bunch of extra systems faster. But then i got to catch up to developing them, and that could be a pain in the butt. Nationalistic zeal, ooh. I like that. Border range, maximum rivalries, you get plus one. I like that. Nationalism's always great. Uh... Let's see, building cost, fifth minus fifth functional architecture. Now, see that aristocratic elite governor requirement cost, 50% leaders. 
capacity plus four leaders cost a bunch that's why i added their lifespan because like what happens is is you your leaders have a finite amount of time that they're around right Cause they're just going to come and go they're going to be born they're going to die and so i want to extend their life a little bit so that way at least i'm not paying for new ones all the time which you pay for with influence which is also something you use to kind of spread your influence throughout the galaxy so you know i don't want to waste all of that constantly buying these these you know dudes are just going to like drop like flies every time i hire one so I expanded their, or I extended their lifespan a little bit. I can do more in genetic research. Uh, in the game, I can tweak the genetic composition of the race that I am, and I can, like, it's totally amazing. Like, if there was ever a dark side of the moon, this game probably came from it. Um, so what do we have here? Syncretic evolution. Start the game with four pops being of another subservient species. <sighs> oh, I get it. Syncretic evolution. Oh. I mean, you know, so anyway. Recruitment costs, architecture. Okay, I like nationalistic zeal. That'll give me a bit, uh, more border coverage. So I can have more minerals coming into it to me. Hopefully that'll engulf a couple. So warrior culture. Really would like that, but armies aren't exactly... I mean, armies are great, but you can just kind of overwhelm in numbers with your armies. Uh, naval capacity meritocracy leadership skill plus one and pool size plus one. hmm an exalted priesthood governor governing ethics attraction ah exalted priesthood that sounds interesting like a military spiritual right because they're exalted priests who are in this nationalistic snail dominating galaxy dominating species i like that all right so exalted priesthood cool Nice. So we have a holy tribunal. I mean, these snails, look at this guy. He even has like a piece of grass coming out of his. Do you see that? That piece of grass right there? What if you see that piece of grass right there? Woo! Wait. All right. So what do we got here? Empire name. Okay. What are we going to call this empire? Speedy delivery? No. Um, we're going to call them the slippery snails which you could find in a garden, which is enough. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, snailians. Snailians. Oh. Snailians. They're the snailians. It makes so much sense. Oh, my God, I'm a genius. Man, snailians. <laughs> Ben, ben was just, he just, he could, he doesn't care. Anyway, uh, no, he does. He was laughing his butt off. Okay, so brown for our shells. And let's see, like a greenish, bluish, maybe. We don't want triangles. That would be silly. Triangles look evil. We don't want evil. See, that's the thing. People are, oh, you're, you're evil because your flag, it looks evil. No, it's just we got really bad designers, that's all. Um, okay, so round, we'll do round. Is there anything shell like? That's kind of swirly like. That's really like. Ooh, that'd be kind of cool, right? Because, you know, the, the, the spirit inside the shell, you know? I like that. Okay. We're going to change that other color, the secondary color. I don't like black. Go with uh, brown, right? No. Orange. No. Light brown. Ooh, that's kind of neat. All right, so we're going to reverse that, though. We're going to put you here. We're going to put you here. Or a darker blue, so it's like. Oh, yeah. It's like water and the ocean. No, we're going to put brown. Because um, the snails live in the ocean. Uh, what else do we have? Let's look at ornate. Just because, you know, it's like this tribunal religious thing. It's not delivery. It's DiGiorno. Oh, my gosh. It is. It's not delivery. It's DiGiorno. It looks like a waterfall. I like that. That's cool. That's neat. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. And then now we're going to go to next. To our, our, our starting weapons. So we can start with either projectile weapons, energy weapons, or missile weapons. Uh, I'm going to have to say, guys, you know, energy and projectile are the, probably the two better ones here. Um, and out of those two, I usually go with projectile weapons. But we'll do uh, energy weapons just so we can see laser beams. Right? It's a space game. We want laser beams. All right. And then FTL method. Okay. So we get to choose what type of how we travel faster than light all right that's ftl in case you didn't know um so we can either do warp travel 
which allows us to just have a bubble region, right? And we can just kind of go to any of them. All right, you can read it. It's there. Um, but it, as it says, it's slower. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, hyperspace, you have to travel along hyperspace lanes, but they're faster. Uh, but you're limited to like the hyperspace highway, if you will. And then wormholes is the best. Um, you have to build wormhole gates, and then you can connect to other gates, but the gates will project you out certain distances, uh, much further than warp travel in hyperspace on average. But again, if you don't have a gate in an area, your ships are kind of stuck there. So we are going to go with, uh, let's see, hyperspace. We'll go with hyperspace travel. All right, we'll do that. I mean, Star Trek's kind of warpy. Star Wars kind of hyperspacey wormhole. I don't know. Star Citizen. Um, Wing Commander. Right? So there's that. Uh, and then Ship Appearance. So we could go with a mol Molluscoid Ship Appearance, or we can go with Avian, Plantoid, Reptilian. We're going to go with Molluscoid just because that's our theme. And then we're going to click Next. And then we're good. That's everything. We're going to hit Save. We're okay, and we're going to go done. All right, so now we're going to set up our galaxy. So we're going to do a large galaxy. We're going to do a four spiral arm galaxy because I like the spirals. Although there is ring, elliptical. Uh, let's do four spiral arms. AI empires will go against eight. Advanced start, we'll have two of them. Fallen empires two so they can battle each other at the very least and leave us the hell alone for five minutes uh habitable worlds will put up by no nah, we'll keep it at whatever ai aggression i want it to be low i don't want well no nah, it doesn't matter they're not that bad here difficulty fine allow any ftl method cool empire placement clusters let's go random advanced neighbors off because that would be awful end game crisis on and iron man mode off which is why we are not eligible for achievements but Iron Man mode, you can't save whenever you So how are how have you been? I've been pretty good, Tomoki. I've actually been pretty good. I uh, helped out on some pieces here and with music and stuff. I've been doing a lot of like game engine research. I'm getting into like Open AL or Open GL programming. I checked out some DirectX stuff last night. Um, I'm gonna build snakes and snake. Wait, snake and something else. Found an asteroid one, which would probably make Ben happy, so I'll probably do that one. But I want to do it from the ground up, so that's what I've been doing. Um, put together a couple Warhammer models. I put together my Storm Surge, three uh, three stealth suit, um, a broadside battle suit, and I'm putting together a ghost keel now. Well, not right now, but now. Your noise gate is really strong. You keep cutting out. Hey, Ben. Ben. Is there a Ben in the house? Yeah, he, uh, Tomoki's saying the gate is really, like, rigid. Uh, I'm on channel 2. Well, channel 4, but it's 2 in, uh, over there on the mixer. Uh, that's crazy news. And the gate, I think the gate on that one has been a butthead lately. In fact, I remember Robbie looking at it and going, that gate, that gate's a butthead. So, but Ben's on the case. Yeah, my guy. Um... So I'll keep talking, Ben will figure it out as I'm yammering on. Uh, so yeah, that's what I've been doing. Put together, putting together the Ghost Keel, getting ready for a big 8th edition uh, Paradise reveal. Uh, hopefully we'll be doing that this week. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I got Steven on the case. I'll be putting together stuff for it this week. It should be fun. Uh, we'll get back to uh, doing some 40K painting and modeling and live streaming. We'll be live streaming actual I hate it when a gaze of what when a gate is Tomiki man. That that's where that's where <laughs> dude, that's where typos, man. <laughs> typos are just gonna get you in trouble. You gotta take your time. <laughs> Even when you have something really funny to say, you gotta slow down. You can't say that that like that. Oh my gosh. No, I'm kidding. Um, that's hilarious. I'm not gonna say it. How, how's the gate now, man? How do you like it, Tomoki? Is it any better? I don't know. He's going to let us know. So, yeah. So, I've got this set up. We're going to go right into the game, and then I'm going to save immediately because I have no idea what time it is. It is, hold on, 5.35, if that time is correct. 
Uh, Dogen, yeah, dude. Wow, Dogen, tear him apart. Anyway, um, so what do we got here? We got the snail, snail, snailians. We're playing as the snailians. Oh, it's a lot better. Okay, cool. It's a lot better. Awesome. Everybody, give Ben a round of applause and a big air hug. All right. So I'm playing as the snailians. I built this race myself. Just from the ground up, I figured snails, snailians, government, holy tribunal, because they're a bunch of religious nuts. Their ruler name is Gloshk. Species is called the Dis, because they diss people in the rap. Uh, but they have slow rap. And they don't like to just give it up. And they don't even, like, snap. And that's their whole method of rap. Um, and then FTL method is hyperspace travel, right? So. You know, they're doing well. Uh, capital's name is Grawl. Ethic, they are militaristic, spiritualistic. Or spiritualists. Spiritualistic. Sure, they're spiritual traits. They are intelligent. They have, uh, I think it said, uh, wait, hold on, let me see. Does it pop up here? Yeah, it does. Slow breeders. Strong. Sedentary. Enduring. Oh, they're enduring. And they prefer oceanic planets. Trying to figure out what this game is, or I guess what kind of game, right? Okay, so this is Stellaris, Dogen. This is Stellaris. It is, it's weird, all right? Because I expected it to have turns, but it doesn't. So it's more towards, like, the Sins of a Solar Empire. Actually, that lower bit was better, Ben. Even in the front. Yeah. Probably doesn't look much better, but, yeah. Oh, I like that. Anyway. Um, yeah, I don't play it, lol. Oh, well, I'm going to explain it, and I'm going to play it, Dogen, and you're going to be like, oh, I get it, totally. So, I feel like you and I watch the same stuff at the same time. Okay, so, you ever play uh, Sins of a Solar Empire? That's kind of where this is coming from, all right? It's real time, like, you're doing stuff, but there's no turn base. No, 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 it's Sins of a Solar Empire. So, you'll notice in the upper right-hand corner there, it says pause, and there's a plus and minus. So you can pause the game, make give commands, right, and start it back up. Uh, you can speed the time up or slow it down, depending on how you're feeling that day. Um, it starts off at the year 2200, January 1st, right? Yes, it is real time. It is real time. Um, the species has just figured out faster than light travel, right? So you get to go around uh, basically conquering the galaxy. So I'm going to begin here. I'm not going to unpause it. Right? So it's going to say full tutorial and stuff. No, I've already done this enough. I don't need that. Go away. All right. Um, so it's paused. So this is the solar system I start out at. Right? I have a Grawl, which is the home planet. Here's the oceanic world. Um, I can, yeah, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. There we go. So there's the planet right there. Here's my ship. Okay, so I start off with a small navy of three ships. 81 is the power. Yes, it is. Civilization. Yeah, dude, 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 dude. Like, seriously, get ready to have, like, one of the largest video game erections ever. All right, Solaris. It's amazing. All right. All right, so you have a small navy here. It has 81 firepower, right? That's great. 81 strength or whatever. I have here a spaceport, right? This is where I'm going to be making all of my ships. All right. Uh, each planet can have one so far. I'm going to start probably on their forum soon, grilling them about how they don't have, like, science stations. They don't have a trade station or a society station. They need those. Like, they need that. So I can start planning actual trade routes and, like, expanding territorial influence and not have to shoot everybody I see. Um, so there's that. This is my science ship. Now I'll need a science officer, which I have. Now, this is really important. Each one of these things has a leader to it my planet does all right my admiral for my navy uh my three scientists for the stuff that'll be up there uh and my science vessel but not my construction ship all right um and they have a lifespan right so their lifespan he's 37 years old he's probably gonna live to 100 and something right plus 15 years because i added that it gives you their skill right here he's got one star so he's technically i guess level one uh, he's careful, so his anomaly, anomaly fail risk is less than 10%. That's somewhat important because if you fail, you could fail. If he fails, he can fail so badly he can die, or he can fail and unforeseen consequences could happen. For example, 
I've seen it where a ship has crashed on a planet. I thought they were dead. I created a whole new ship. I got a whole new science officer. And then like 200 years down the road, I got this call from them like, hey man, we started this whole other primitive civilization and we're actually here. We survived. You know, do you want to hang out with this? Or hey, we hate you for abandoning us or whatever. And it can become a whole thing. So, and yes, that's how weird this game gets. It's amazing. Um, so there's, there's these leaders here. So I have a science vessel. Um, each one of these ships, the science vessel is going to scan. And I will command him to do that now. And actually, I'll command him to do it in here. I usually don't. I usually go somewhere else to do that. And I'll show you in a sec how I do this. But you right click, right? So you select them here, or you can select them in your list here, right? ISS Egiana. It's a nice name. Um, and then I want to I survey Ugrim, right? So I'll go, okay, survey just Ugrim, right? But I want him to actually survey the whole system. So I'm going to do the whole system. And now they'll just go ding, 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 right? And he'll do the whole thing for me. And he might uncover some really cool stuff. So hopefully he does. Hopefully minerals and energy. Everything else I'm not terribly worried about. Uh, my construction ship, which will be useless at the moment, um, will be used to build satellites, mining stations, and um, not webway gates. I don't have gates in this hyperspace. Uh, oh, defense satellites, things like that. Um, yes, indeed. So now here's my planet. So now this is the planet I'm on. This is the starter planet. I've only talked to you like briefly about just how to start your research and figuring out and discovering things. I really love this game. I know, right? Okay. So what 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 is going on here? You see, at some point, Jake and I are going to sit down and play and just like try to conquer the galaxy either together or against each other. I don't know. Um, but anyway, Grawl is a, is a planet. So let's see here. It's our capital world. So our, we have less, 10 less unrest. Border extrusions is uh, plus 50%. So that means our border goes out further than it would normally if it was just a regular planet um, and not our capital. And the government ethics attraction is 100%. Uh, it's an ocean world. It's 100% habitable by us because we evolved here. This gives us all the minerals and research and stuff that we have coming out of it. This is our population. This is the planet size. Excuse me. This is the amount of unrest, right? So if people don't like me, uh, how much food? This is excess food, surplus, which will be also up here. Um, and then this is the output. So this is how much surplus we have. So we have eight extra minerals, ten resources, which is silly because we're only having three extra come out. So I'm not sure where that's going. And then one, one, and two. So these are normally five, five, and five. So this is one. Uh, this is six, six, and seven. These are points that go to research. Um, this is going to be our planetary governor, um, and he is great because he keeps on rest down. He gives us a little building speed boost and clear blocking time boost. And what does that mean? Look at this. There's tabs. Oh, it's a menu game. Um, so now this is our planetary view for the moment. Um, this is what the tiles that are set up here, okay, on this planet, um, I would like something different at some point, but, you know, <clears throat> you get what you get. Um, so what's going on here? This is just kind of an artistic, you know, our, you know, view of, romanticized view of what the planet's, like, landscape would be with all this stuff. And it gets bigger and changes based on what we add here. Um, these are blockers, right? So each one of these tiles have a blocker over it. Each one of these is an open tile. These are tiles. Tiles are where we can put things, uh, buildings and structures and whatnot, that can either exploit or just create a whole new thing going on here. So there's food, so this is obviously, you know, very fertile, right? So we'd put a farm there, and there's a hydroponic farm there. So you can see that typically I'm only getting three out of this. Well, no, the hydroponics farm gives me three, and I have one coming off the train itself. So for some reason I'm getting five, and that's because I'm next to that thing, which is the planetary capital. The planetary capital gives plus one to minerals, food, and energy credits to anything that's adjacent to it. So that's why this guy's getting another boost out of that. Um, which also means that when you colonize, you're going to have to try to think about where you put this guy. Um, and we'll get into that after we colonize the first time, uh, which will probably be later tonight. Um, so if you guys are down, I'll come back on, and uh, we'll... I don't know, we'll play a couple hours of this, maybe go a couple hundred years into this, see what happens. Um, maybe a hundred years. Uh, so anyway, 
power right here. Things give electricity, so you put a power station on it. Uh, mining network, because things give you minerals. Pretty self-explanatory. This here is a physics research uh, station or area, and I guess there's some kind of physics thing going on there. Some kind of engineering feat, something going on in these areas. And those will give you bonuses to research. i uh, very down for that. Okay, cool. Then I'll come back. Um, so yeah, and then we can clear these. Obviously, these are blockers. That's why they have the yellow and black, right? Like construction tape, right? They use very familiar things in video games so people can immediately go, hey, that's in my way. Um, and we're going to clear the food because we're going to want these. These guys are slow breeders, so it's going to take time for them to actually start populating planet. So we're just going to take one out of there. Uh, there isn't any pop growing. We haven't actually technically started the game yet. So we're just giving orders before we hit go. Now, that's super important in this game. You want to give as many orders and straighten everything out and get everything organized before you even hit go on the game because then you're going to be like, well, wait a minute, I'm a day late on this, a dollar short, um, which this game pretty much exemplifies that. Um, so those are the planetary deals. We have armies. So this was the surface. We had the planetary, sum planetary, planetary summary, the surface area summary, so with all the tiles and what's on them. Um, I'll get into this, which is Unity. Uh, that came out recently. That was a couple months ago. Um, I'll tell you about that in a sec. So now we have our, our military here. All right. So we don't have any attacking generals. We don't have any defending generals. We don't have any generals. Right? Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five defending defense shell. Uh, <laughs> the snail army and they have a defense shell. All right, anyway. So they have, uh, we have five defense shells here. Um, and these will help defend the planet. No, you know, it's beginning of the game, so if anything super huge came by, it would totally roll us, but that's not going to happen. If we wanted to have a general, we recruit, recruit uh, a general by going to Meow. We click on the army, and then we can assign it a leader. But armies, we don't necessarily need to have a leader right away. Um, I usually skip that. I don't give them any attachments either until... Basically, like I'm being attacked, I'm going to be attacked inevitably. Let's start giving them stuff because they build so quick, it doesn't necessarily matter. Um, we're not orbitally bombarding our own planet. Uh, we have defense armies and assault armies. Uh, assault armies, I will show you what you do with them, but it's a lot to do with assaulting things. Uh, so there's that. And then we have our spaceport, and our spaceport is that guy right here. Um, and, and we can upgrade him, add modules that will change the dudes like capabilities, how fast things are built, how fast things are repaired, um, if it's good at defense, if it's good at attack, if it's good at research, that sort of thing. Again, I still think they should probably just make a whole other station and build a whole other section of that, but we'll get into that later as far as what I think could be done to improve this game, because I am hypercritical as always. Um, so here we have the Corvette, which is our basic ship, construction ship, science ship, we can upgrade the spaceport when we've researched it. We can build a, a colony ship when we have 350 material. Um, and we're going to be working towards that, but slowly. We don't want to just jump out and start colonizing stuff. Um, so that's planetary summary. Uh, if it's a planet you don't own, you're going to get this. And I haven't actually researched I haven't actually scanned it, so I don't know what the surface looks like yet. Um, gas giants are good. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so sciences. We're going to click here. We have physics. Run by Gam uh, Garma, and he is a genius. So he's going to give me plus 10 percent whatever I research. Uh, they each have a trait. If I go here, these are all of my dudes. So this guy, this guy, and this guy are back home studying, and this guy is the guy that is in my little uh, science ship. And I can recruit others, and you'll see here, see, like, that's totally worth it. I know it seems weird, but it's totally worth to grab a genius early on. So we're going to do that. I'm just going to do that. And your guys are going to be like, what? Why'd you do that? So we're going to do that. I know we're already down to 50 already, but here we go. Why did I recruit him? Well, kind of to show you, and also because he's a genius. So what do we want in here? Physics. First thing that you're going to want to do is make your power efficient, as, as efficient as possible. And the reason being is because when you, you build your first colony ship, it's going to suck up like, 16 power or something like that 15 or 16 power and at the beginning of the game that's going to be a lot so you might go negative you might just have zero and not be able to really do anything so we want to make our power as efficient as possible for physics which will be where our energy research 
and um, computer research, particle research is going to be. Um, then we have uh, our society stuff, which is where we're going to study society stuff. Um, we're going to go with growth speed. And the reason why is because we have already have a, a negative to our growth. We have a negative 15% to our growth. So we're going to unlock what's called genome mapping. And that will allow us to breed faster. But here you'll see it also unlocks things on the biological path. Interesting. We'll see where that takes. So we're going to do that. So we're going to help our growth a bit. And then here we have homeboy here is uh, your engineer. Now, we could study engineering facility. Meh. Missile defense. Meh. Here we go. Powered exoskeletons. We have extra army damage, and we get an extra 15, 5% boost to our minerals, which we already have a 5% boost to, and that'll bring us to 10%. And it will unlock robotics, which I'm not sure if you guys saw. I will show you again. It will unlock the robotic path, which will allow us to create killer robots, helper robots, robot robots. It'll be great. Like, there won't be a lonely snail on this planet soon. Um, that's how it works. So we got biology. We're researching growth speed, which is genome mapping. And then we're researching powered exoskeletons so we can grab onto robotics. Um, and that will increase growth with the genome mapping. And then the power exoskeletons will do army damage and minerals increase our minerals. And why would they do that? Well, probably because armies can punch harder and you could gather minerals fast uh, if you have aid. Hence why we need more Iron Man suits. Now, what's more important here? These are all at 360. He's a genius. He's in the material stuff. That's, let's just swap him out for this guy. All right. And we'll keep the other guy. Yeah, we'll keep the other guy for now. Because we might want to swap them in and out. Like, that's the thing. You're going to want the right scientists for the right job because these things matter. Oh, my gosh. There's more things that matter in this game? What? The hoot and the holler? I'm telling you, man, it's a hoot and a holler and a hey. Actually, wait a minute. Hold on. Did I have an industrial type of dude? No, I didn't. All right. Well, 2% it is. Um, oh, it's purple and orange flames. All right. So. What are we doing here? Why are we doing this? Well, because geniuses just automatically get a 10% boost to their research speed. So you want as many geniuses as possible. Great. Um, and there is a way to research into making that happen more often, but we'll skip that for now. But what happens if you don't? Let's say you have here, his expertise is on new world. So he's a, his expertise is into researching how to colonize new worlds, how to improve new worlds, those sort of things. But unfortunately, genome mapping is biology. So he's not too great at it. He's a, so, he's a social scientist. However, he cannot, his specialization, his specialization is not in biology. So we're only getting a 2% boost for him being here. Instead of where these geniuses are giving us a 10% boost plus the 2% just for being of that, you know, of their skill level. So that's just how we're going to do it. I could always move the geniuses off to other things, which I will um, probably move... Well, maybe not, because I can probably get more power out of these guys and more minerals out of these guys and just kind of flub around uh, with this until either I get another genius or I can match up these icons and so go down there. But colonization will be important later on down the road, so I may not do anything at all. Um, that takes care of research. What's going on up here? We have our, what is this thing? This is our government, right? So we can get in our government. We have the beautiful uh, image in the background here of our planet with the building that the snails live in, uh, the general snail, snailian, sorry, the general snailian architecture, um, a fertile preacher, a fertility preacher. So this guy is a priest who talks about fertility um, and home in the sky, uh, base ports cost less and the modules cost less. So that's good. Uh, gives us what we picked for our government ethics. What our uh, civic uh, leaning, our skills, or I guess strengths are. Uh, we're authoritarian, so our next election is going to happen in 40 years. All right, that's good to know. Uh, what our agenda is, a new generation. All right, so this is the agenda for this guy. What he's going to do is, you know, start the game. So he's going to increase growth, speed, and happiness because they just figured out how to go faster than light. Imagine how happy we would be if we figured that out. Uh, like, you know, if we actually tried to. Produced, uh, I don't know, income, we have 15 of something, monthly income, 15 of something. I don't know what this is. It's not really giving me 
not sure. Uh, expenses. So these are my expense accounts. This is how much. Okay. So I guess this is just the total of all of this. This is uh, 11, 15. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, 15. And then this is the costs for everything. It comes down to 11. We have 3.93 uh, surplus on that. And then here's all of our economic effect. All right. Uh, and then our demographic. Demographics are going to be important. Uh, demographics come together when we start building factions. Factions will start appearing over here. Uh, so we're going to have to start dealing with them. They're going to have wants and needs. And they're going to be like, oh, but we need to focus on this. Or, oh, isn't this the best thing in the world? Nom, 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 nom. Are you also on the merch roll with Ben and I? The merch roll? No, I don't know what that is. What's the merch roll with Ben and I? I don't know. Ben and I don't ever talk. Hey, Ben. Um, we, like, whenever we pass each other, we just kind of give each other strange, like, like, look. Um, no. I don't know what merch, merch roll with Ben. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, demographic. Uh, government ethics attraction, growth speed, that sort of thing. You know, what's going on in the old civilization here. Contact. So if we ever meet any new aliens, hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more, we might actually do that. Um, they'll be in here. This whole menu is a flip flopping mess. Just a flippity, floppity, floopity mess. I don't even know what to say about it sometimes. Um, and the event system sometimes, wow. So we'll go over that later because uh, that'll happen. Ben and I are coming up with all kinds of merch ideas for Mint Potion. Oh, well, yeah, I'm always on that. I know what was the last thing I came up with. Oh, wait, I can't say what that was. Anyway, um, situation log. So let's say your scientist discovers something and he wants to research it or a whole artifact gets found and it brings up a whole quest chain of things. Yes, there are quests in this game. Then you can follow that. Uh, the quest chains will work really well. Um, and they'll be notified here. And this little thing will be this color instead of blinking, which is what I should have think it should do. But anyway. Um, and then these are the different victory conditions and how you're doing with that. Excuse me. Uh, that's the science. We were just in there. And then these are just, this is like a drop down or roll down menu of kind of all the other stuff that's on here. We got planets and sectors. So this will give us an overview of our planets and the sectors, which we'll eventually deal with. Uh, keep zooming over here. Policies and edicts. We could put down certain policies, you know, how do we deal with, you know, orbital bombardment, food stockpiling, you know, uh, you know, food storage capacity changes here. I mean, I usually stay with minimal, and then, like, at some point when I really have a really major surplus, I'll start stockpiling it up. Our war philosophy, unrestricted war, liber uh, wars of liberation, wars of defense. Um, I don't care, it's the galaxy. Uh, that was orbital bombardments, resettlement. Uh, is it allowed for me to pick up people and force them to resettle, or is it prohibited? Um, <clears throat> right now, I can do whatever I want. First contact protocol is going to be aggressive instead of peaceful. Um, sorry, I don't believe in the whole they're going to be peaceful. Slavery is prohibited, is not allowed, and I can purge. Purging is prohibited. Purging means I take a population and I purge them. I don't want them there anymore. Um, I don't, I mean, you know, as ruler of the galaxy, I guess I'll avoid that. Uh, I wonder if you were going to put in some input. There is a lot of lightning happening right now for some reason. Oh, well, you know, I don't know. What kind of what kind of things are you guys thinking of for merchandise? You know, I mean, other than shirts and hats and um, baseball gloves, uh, Michael Jordan shoes, uh, we could make basketball shoes mint potion basketball shoes i like the pump remember those pump shoes i mean pumps are cool too we can make ladies pumps how many people would like to buy a mint potion ladies pump or stiletto i mean if you look at our colors it's pretty pretty dang spring um anyway and summer if you're gonna push it that far you know maybe you're on a budget edict uh these are things that i demand and they'll cost me a certain amount of influence um but they'll increase things they also have a negative negative thing to it so like you know it'll take away from something it's typical government you have to take away from one to give to another uh so nothing really foreign there um 
Factions, eventually I'll have factions. Like the free snail legislation group that wants stuff. And, you know, I usually just line them up against the wall and shoot them because I'm not screwing around here. It's Galactic Conquest. Uh, strategic resources. Uh, so when we scan stuff and planets around the galaxy and in solar systems, there's going to be unique resources. This will be there. That list is. Species, this is where I can come to modify my species when I can. Yes, I can modify my species. It is mine. I made them. Leaders, so this is just kind of an overview of all the leaders. Government, science, admirals, generals, blah, 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 blah. I could recruit an admiral. Let's say I recruit uh, 42 years old, weapon range, 32. I'd rather go with the 32-year-old who's efficient. Um, and then we can put him on here so we can click on the military fleet assign leader and bam he's now assigned to it um and what that's going to do is he's now going to make sure that my upkeep is 10 percent less which at these times it's not a lot but it's enough to help so we went through all of the menus except for traditions which is a whole nother bag of chips and we'll go over that when traditions pop up uh expansion planner no idea never used it i just conquer every living thing that moves Ship designer, super important. Going to be changing our ships around a lot. Going to be redesigning their weapons. Unfortunately, I can't change body parts right now, but I'm sure they're eventually going to add that. A lot of this stuff looks like it could be modular. Um, they could just cut sections out and then remove it and put in new engines and stuff. But when we research new weapons and new technology, we're going to be updating our ship. I can set it to auto, but sorry, I like doing it myself. Choose, right? Choose. F choose. Um, I think it was Dane Cook, right? When he was talking about when he went out to go see an accident, he was like, oh, I went out to see an accident, you know, I was looking at it. I didn't even bring cheese, man. Fuck cheese. Um, so that's all the menus. Uh, resources, power, minerals, food, influence, which is used to buy leaders and spread throughout the galaxy to turn people towards your cause. Unity, which is how unified your people are. Uh, your science points because everything's going to cost a certain amount of points. This costs 360. Every month I'll generate six. And so that would be 12 months, so a year uh, of research. Not too shabby, actually. If you think about it, it says 40, 53 months. Six, 360. Oh, right. 12. No, hold on. I'm being an idiot. So six times six, 36. So it would be 60. 53 to 12%. Yeah, okay. So there you go. So instead of 60 months, I have a 12% bonus in doing it in 53. Man, threes are hard. Uh, everything multiply. If it adds up to three, it's divisible by three. I don't know. Whatever. Um, so yeah. Boom, bing, bang, bang, boom. That would be the main introduction to this game. There is other stuff down here that's going on here. Right, little shortcuts and stuff. Right, boom, bam, boom, bam, boom. That's nice. Uh, we can unpause the game. And but first, we're gonna do what everybody wants to see. Boom! What is this? I'm here. That's what you saw. That. But now it's all a part of ha ha ha, the galaxy. So this is the entire galaxy in which there is who knows what's living in here. Space dragons, space whales. Space cupcakes made out of strawberry. We don't know, but we'll find out. We're going to save immediately. File. Save game. We're going to call this the Snailians. I can't see that far, so I'm hoping I'm spelling this right. Snailians. Save. Boom. Resume. All right. Snailians have been saved. Our first moves are ready to go. What's going on here? We shall find out. We're going to grab our science ship, though. We're going to hold down Shift. We're going to right-click here, and we're going to hit Survey System. Now he's not only going to survey the system I just told him to, but the next one as well. And then we're going to do it again here, and then we're going to do it again here, and again here, just within our, our bubble of influence for right now. Um, construction ship, good to go. We don't need anything to construct at the moment. And then we're going to hit Space Bar. And we've begun the game. How amazing is this? Space noises! Yep. Hey, man, if you want to get things done, you really got to go fascist. I'm sorry. Got to, you know, 
people have mistaked that for racism. They don't have to be. Racists are just racist. Fascists get shit done. <laughs> so. All right, so here we go. We're flying through. We're at four times. We're at fast speed, which is four times the average speed, right? I think four times. Or two times. I think it's four times. That's three. That's it. So we want, go. Yeah. All right, so let's see. Here we go. See our science ship here. He scanned this, and now we've got this little energy credit there. So we're going to pause the game. Pause the game. And then we're going to click on our construction. And, we're right and now we can build a mining station for 90 units or 90 minerals. So we're going to do that. That's going to boost this up by two. So we'll have five income from that point on. Let's watch how this guy scans. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. And then we're going to research it. Bam, and he's going to go back and he's going to research it. And so now he's researching what's going on down there. By the way, if you're on that planet, cover your balls. Um, Got to wear that tinfoil hat, guys. Telling you, you never know. Aliens could be scanning us right now. Um, and so now this guy is building the station to collect power. Um, and it seems like everything's good here. Let's check out difficulty is one. So he should either succeed or just fail but not die, hopefully. Let's see what do we got here. Okay, we found a natural formation on Luigi on Lurgy Posh. I was about to say Luigi's Mansion. Stunning in its geometrical perfection. This is surely a divine sign marking our way out towards the stars. We should continue to investigate these sorts of anomalies wherever we get the chance. It will most assuredly grant us new knowledge and technology. Absolutely. So we're going to say praise to the divine. Because they're spirit trollist guys, right? So they are they think, you know, there's a divine being of some kind controlling everything. So there we go. That's it. We just chill, man. All we got to do is chill, right? So that's complete. Mining station is done. This is why I love these games, right? See, like, I can just chill now. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Months or months, days, years are flying by. This is what happens, like, when you're, you know, maybe this is what Kato meant by higher dimension, you know? Like, maybe this is how it works. Like, maybe games are in a lower dimension and we just get to, that's ridiculous. Um, ooh, a blue star, which means there is a chance it could give me power, but it's not. Ah, oh, stupid star. Oh, stupid star didn't give me any electricity. I want more electricity and more minerals. What's this guy going to give me? Possibly? No, no minerals. How about this guy? We're just going to follow each one of these. That's a lot of gas giants in this solar system, man. I don't even want to know what the tidal gravitation is like in this, this solar system. Like, this planet that we came from must have ridiculous seismic activity. I mean, gravitation alone, I uh, guess. Not sure about gravitation, but I'll tell you what, the magnetic fields of these things must be playing everywhere. What's going on? What's going on? Oh, oh, what is he scanning now? He's scanning another gas giant. If you get enough chili dogs in me, I turn into a gas giant. What's going on over here? Oh, I don't know. How's our research come along? Month went by already. Isn't that crazy? Actually, a whole year went by. Not a whole year just flew by. Amazing. What's going on over here? This is great. See, I'm totally hands-free. Game does itself. It's amazing. It's like watching a space opera. It's like I'm just gonna direct Star Trek. How about that. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. I love that. all right scanning more planets we got we got we got an ink uh system survey complete all we got is a measly two power that's lame balls all right well homeboy just come back i guess hoping i could we dance what's in this solar system? ooh only three planets one of them is yellow which means can we Habitability, not sure yet, but it looks like we could. It's a wet climate, so it looks like we could possibly colonize that one, too. We have recovered an artifact from an ancient alien civilization on Yump <laughs> 2. <laughs> from what we have translated so far of their language, uh, we have learned that these aliens called themselves the Erasian. Erasian 
Concordat. Uh, they were an interstellar power that held sway over this region of the galaxy a little over a million years ago. They appear to have been sick-limbed mammalians, and there are several references to some sort of plague called the Devorian Pot, which swept across their empire with devastating repulsively le leading to their extinction. Wow. Never set Never set I fire on a gas. Never set a fire on a gas giant. That's true. Dude, I always wondered what would happen. Like, who's the guy that shows up to like Jupiter and he pulls out a cigarette, right? Like, who's that guy, right? Big giant, no smoking sign, hydrogen gas giant, right? Hydrogen gas giant. I mean, you need oxygen to make that work, but let's just forget about signs for a second. What are you doing, right? Like, that's amazing. Zelda, Zack, Mint Potion. Who's Mint Potion? Uh, all right. I don't know who's playing this Mint Potion. All right, so that was that one. There. See, this is what I like about this game. Crazy stuff happens. And you're like, well, what if happens if Space Monkeys actually did come for all, for all of our bananas? You know? I mean, what do you do? That's the one thing about Planet of the Apes I don't quite understand is, like, You'd think they'd be enslaving people, you know, human beings, the ape, would be enslaving human beings to, like, harvest the bananas. I mean, I don't know if you're racist or nothing, but that's just the way I see it. Um, what do we have? We have uh, system survey complete, and we have anomaly. So all the things that go on, all the events will happen up here, and we can click on that and review it. Oh, he's already researching it. Wonderful. Scanning the star. It's a level three. And I'm only level one, so yeah, 50% risk of failure. Probably going to fail. Probably going to crash and burn into the star. Let's see what happens. Uh, we have gotten a report from science teams that a ceramic container uh, was circling the star. Okay. Most peculiar, it should obviously not be there, yet somehow it has managed to find its way into a close orbit. A special project can be issued to investigate the container and try to deduce how it ended up there. All right, so let's see, the conundrum's a conundrum worth investigating, or surely this is a sign of the divine. Yeah, sorry, we're going to investigate. So now my situation log has been updated, and I'm going to go to the situation log, and it's going to say I need, I need a science officer of level 2 or higher. So possibly, let's see. Oh, he is level 2. Okay, so we're going to have him research this right now. This planet, which is an inhabitable planet, has extra minerals. So because it's inhabitable, we're not going to go for it as far as, like, I'm not going to put a satellite up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this planet. I should probably, I probably build something here, build a capital there, and I'll just colonize. So, because I'd just be doing double duty. I'd end up spending on a planet that I'm just going to end up taking over anyway and, like, I don't know. 270? What's going on here? Do I have any extra dudes here? No. We're going to move you here. Uh, that's not forced migration. Forced migration is taking a, a population off the planet. We're going to clear that. We're going to clear this. So now these city, like these old sprawling slums will be gone. Um, and we'll be adding, and then we'll get rid of the industrial wasteland, which costs a little more. So, uh, construction ship I don't need because, again, I'm going to put off that. This guy's scanning here. He's doing a pretty good job of it. Uh, it's taking a little while. Let's see. How's our science going on? What's going on here? See? Ah, these guys are doing pretty well. Got a couple years left before they finish their research. Uh, we're going to back out here. We're just going to take a look at the galaxy. Hmm. An interesting web game of stuff. So if we want to get into that spiral arm, this would be the closest route possibly. Yeah, most likely. So this would be the closest route to jump there. And of course, this outer area. This outer area is nice. I think this region here is what we're looking at as far as kind of the first parts of our empire really coming together will be here. This will be the main region here. Um We'll expand out. Like, our influence will probably hit these stars here, but we're going to move in this direction. 
Reason being is because moving to the clo closer in, you're just kind of building yourself into a corner. Because obviously you can't traverse. I don't know why you can't. You'd think you could. You'd think they'd add another galaxy, and then you could just take the black hole there. Ha ha, double duty, ha ha, poop poop. 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 Zelda Zach 15, how's it going, man? How you doing? We got here. Yump. Planet Yump. Trump. Like, great, 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 great grandfather. Yump. Went from Trump to Yump. Yanni Yump. Run for president. Alright. Uh, we're doing well here. Yeah, this guy's taking his sweet time. Probably just build a hydroponics farm in advance. So yeah, to build something, it's pretty simple. You grab on the tile, click on build, and then you go through whichever building you want to place on that tile. However, obviously, if it's got minerals, you want to add to that. But a mining station, if it's got electricity, you'll want to put a power plant. If it has, I don't know, what else is in here? Uh, if you want to put uh, which it, uh, physics, you can put a physics station there, and they'll study physics stuff. All right. So now we're here we are. We're at traditions. So traditions are kind of a way of separating and customizing your game more than normal and in your species more than normal, though eventually I assume you're just going to be able to get all of them. Um, and what they do is you, you get these uni unity points, and these unity points can be spent on each one of these doodads here. And so we each one of these I guess, sections have expansion, domination, prosperity, harmony, supremacy, diplomacy, and discovery. And so um, I'll get all the ones that end in Y. Um, and so clearly expansion has something to do with colonizing other planets. Domination has something to do with politically dominating a region. Um, Either at home or uh, abroad. Prosperity, obviously, it's be you know mining and building buildings and that sort of thing, constructing buildings. Harmony, uh, that's going to be how well your people get along with each other and other species. Uh, supremacy will be how well you can dominate uh, militarily. Diplomacy is dealing with other species, and discovery is all your science stuff. Once you unlock all of these, you can then grab an ascension perk, and the ascension perk will be like a huge bonus, to something like. You get a whole bunch of resource, resources, or now you don't have to worry about colonizing any other type of planet. Like, you can just terraform any planet you look at. Uh, so we're going to go with expansion from the start. Uh, we'll probably go expansion, supremacy, and then harmony. Um, although we might swap out supremacy for prosperity at some point. Um, so we're going to adopt this here, which is expansion. One of the reasons I like doing this is because, one, I get a plus one to all my capital buildings and the unity they produce. But also I get this little deal here, which says every time I create a new colony or my species expands into another solar system and build a whole new colony from a planet or whatever, the cost of each one of these is going to go up. This is going to give me a 33% discount on that. So that way I don't have to pay so much so I can get them a lot faster. Might as well get that from the start. So that is that whole section there. Uh, anything interesting happen? I oh, know I had it on pause, so nothing was happening. It was just nothing was happening while I was giving you that entire speech. The game was just staring at me like, what are you doing, man? Uh, so there we go. There's uh, there's the spielies. Uh, don't have enough yet to colonize another planet, but soon I will. Let's see, will I be able to... I have a few months. I'm making nine... No, yes. This will be done about the time I'm ready. All right, 10, 90, no. Uh, no, this will be, won't be ready, but that's fine. It'll be ready once they land, though, while the colony is being constructed. Because it's build the ship, but I must stay with a Doomamang. Doomamang. Doomamang? Uh, do the main, do the main. All right, what do we got here? How long is this guy taking to? Wow, oh, slow breeders are extremely slow breeders. Look at that. I'm gonna have to take that trait right out of him. 
that's one of the first things I do when I study the biological or I do research up the biological chain is I'll start getting array, getting all of my races negatives out of it. And so then they become like a superpower within like, I don't know, 100 years. So, eh, more like 50,000. How are we doing on time? It's 620. Okay. Everybody's waiting for Malachi. Is that happening? We're doing that? I don't know. Find out. Two, one. See, now, there's a lot of these combination tiles that they don't have answers to. This, I could put a slave coordination spot, but I don't have slaves, so I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know if there's a building I can research. Um, that'll help me with that. Um, they're religious, so maybe loaves and fishes. I don't know. Um, but there's combinations of like, here, let me show you. On this guy, that'll probably be combination of strength. No combination of strength. Ah, the research is done. Yay, let's pause. All right, so our army damage is going to go up by 5%, and the minerals we bring in is going to go up by 5%. So what are we going to do next here? We have a genius. We can either do ion thrusters, which increases the speed of our ships in the system, increase our mineral networks, or we can just go with building a corvette assembly yard, which will allow us to build faster corvettes, which we're going to do, because there is a chance I might have played this game a bit too much. There's a chance we could run into pirates early game, almost guaranteed, or wacko religious sect. Get that? Get out of here. I didn't say religious sect. I said religious sect. That's right. Wacko religious sect that could be flying around the universe just trying to kick our balls. So we're going to try to expedite getting them off out of our hair by making it so we can build these ships faster. Um, Power will be uh, more efficient, so we'll go up to probably 8 there. And growth will be up by 10% at some point. So, But since this is 600 points, it's going to take a while. It's going to take us 75 months. I'm going to keep genius on this one. We'll see what happens here. We might swap these guys out. I'm not sure. All right. We're going for it. All right. Boom, bang, boom, bang, boom. Oof, the music. Music is so good, guys. It's so good in this game. And you can select what you want. See? Here's all is. We're listening to Dragon Breath. Thank the powers that be. Extra dimensional insight. Modifier added for 250, 240 months. Giving the following effect. Research speed up by 15%. Awesome. Nice. Let's turn the volume up a bit here. All right, what's going on here? Oh, it's the science ship. Oh, did he just like give up on survey the system? Oh, wow, okay. Just decided he wasn't gonna survey anymore. Now I'm behind on surveying. So we'll take this one step further. Crawl's doing well. See, we don't need like our military, like unless something really starts kicking us around, we really don't need to boost up military. They're not going to help us scan anything. Not like a lot of these games where it's like, oh, your scout is also kind of your lowest level gun guy. Science ships have no weapons on them whatsoever. Ooh, what is this? Ooh, social research. What's the inhabitability of this? 60% just barely. Um... Uh, I don't know. Terraforming this won't be so expensive, so I might terraform that yellow planet. This one's not going to be easy. This one's yeah, world. I'll have to melt that one. Research complete! Yay! So now we can build panels. So what we're going to do here? <laughs> Let's see. So we have. Do we want to increase our energy storage capacity and our energy capacity on our ship, on our planet, or do we want the energy storage capacity, or sorry, we want the energy grid, which allows us to just boost existing power? 
<sighs> I think we should go at the energy grid. Because we're going to get more of a uh, max capacity. This is going to come up quick, and so is this. This guy I've seen show up like the first couple options and then disappear for like 10. So we're going to go with that. Yeah. And that might push us more towards prosperity. And the reason why is because if you look over here on this branch here, you please not strategic resources. What am I doing? Unity. Uh, too bad I can't hear the game. You can't hear the game. Why? How can you not hear the game? Uh, poopy faces, poopy faces. I mean, music volume is pretty decent. Let me, uh, let me do this. You tell me when it is too loud. Okay. So, um... Yeah, I'm going to go with the boost, too. And that's just in the long run. And the reason why I was going to show you that, because in prosperity, I can go the pursuit of profit, right? Energy grid and energy nexus now produce two unity. So now I would get more unity just from having those down the line. So that's good. In fact, you'll probably see me go all the way for this and this, and then not get these two, and then go right for these. Because these are amazing. Harmony only. Random ad time. Weird. Um, only this if I really am getting some unrest on my planet. Doesn't usually happen because I'm a pretty dope leader. Pretty much trying to make sure everybody's happy. You know, keep them looking at the stars. That's all that matters. Um, all right. So we got a boost of food here. That's nice. Uh, that guy came in. I don't know if you guys remember, but we were waiting for that guy to be born. Um, so now that that guy's born, matured, and ready to work, uh, which is all we care about. Metaphor in there somewhere. Um, yeah, so that's good. How's this dead planet? This crazy dead planet. Still haven't surveyed it yet. Science ship. What are you doing, science ship? Doing science stuff? Good, you're doing science stuff. All right. Ooh, what is this? We got a double? Oh, we have a double. All right, we're going to send our constructor ship here. Build that. And then we'll build our first colony ship. Eh, we're not going to build our first colony ship. Not yet. We're going to go to our spaceport. We're going to build that. And then we're going to go to our surface. We're going to move you to where the power is. And then we're going to build up our power supply. So that way we don't go negative when we build this, this uh, science ship thing. Research complete. Awesome. Oh, and the system survey is complete. Did we get anything out of that? Oh, we got a little physics out of that guy. That's cool. So new research. Okay, so this one will increase our monthly influence, which is that guy right there by one. This one will reveal a resource for us, and this will bring our army upkeep down and give us a military academy. We're going to go with the uh, monthly influence. Military academy is very important believe it or not. But we're not going to pick that right now because we really don't have a military that we have to worry about upkeep. And the academy itself, though it's great for the social and engineering research, also the army build speed, army damage, unrest goes down. Interesting. Nice to have, but we don't really need it at this moment. Everything seems to be running pretty much smooth as butter. So we're going to go with the planetary unification uh, research. And that will also see now this will also allow us this will put us on the path to being upgrading to be able to upgrade our planetary capitals, which in the long run will boost everything else. So as always with these games, your first couple research, you know, things are gonna be mostly foundational. You know, like I'm gonna be going in this direction, so I should research that. I want to have this strength or I'm going to expand on the existing strength of this race or whatever, I'm going to get that. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Right meow. Um, that's pretty good, actually. That's a lot of research stuff. Let's build... Uh, when's this coming in? When's this guy coming in? Not for a while. I got two out of that. Two there. Let's see if we can find maybe... Hopefully our science ship will pro 
find some power for us. Because this is going to be good. That'll bring us down to 3. That'll bring us down to 2. This will bring us back up to 5. Right? So this will bring us up to 7. Hold on. Let's see what this... I can't remember what this solar array gives us. I think it's plus 3. Yeah, plus 3. Alright, so we're going to go with another one here, and that'll give us 5 total. Um, and then... Nothing, huh? Well, how many planets have I researched? Oh, I started at the middle. Cool. So I still have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 planetary bottles, 11 planetary, 12 planetary bottles, 2, 4, six. Oh no, these have already been, these have already been, no they haven't, right? Oh no, maybe they have been. Darn it. This is where like the game, like this random thing can be a real pain, because like it's hard to figure out. Uh, like for example, uh, these stars are pretty bright, they might give us something. These low stars probably won't. Black holes will give us something. They'll either give us physics or they'll give us some type of research, usually physics, um, and possibly energy sometimes. Um, there are these like really bright blue stars that'll give us electricity sometimes. Um, I'm going to put you here, but I don't want you to do anything. Um, what else is there? Yeah, right now there's not, I mean, it's kind of hard to tell. There's other things other than black holes like nebula I think like this no that's another black hole. interesting but there's pulsars and stuff I think as well that will give us pulsars and um what are the other ones neutron stars and stuff you know can't pack that many neutrons together in one spot against physics but whatever neutron star um Boom, 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 boom. See, I'm watching myself zoom in on out on stream. Kapow! 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 Look at me meow! Oh, see? We got minerals. We found minerals. We don't need minerals, man. We got plenty of minerals. We got them minerals, dog. I need that energy. I need at least... Uh... It's alright. I got time. I got time. We've got time. We're good. We've got like three more months before I have to start worrying about colonization. And then, and then I'm just going to be a mess. I'm a mess. I'm going to, you know, I mean, imagine what the first dude, you know, who's going to be like, I don't know, president of the world, right? When, when, oh, there we go. We got one. Cool. Construction ship. Go here. Can I? Yes. Built. Um, you know, first colony, Mr. President, the colony was vaporized by space snails. Excuse me? Space snails, sir. We always thought the possibility. We ran into them. How did you run into space? I mean, really? Space snails? Yes, sir. They're actually a lot faster than they look. With the power of Kapow, you found the minerals. Yes, the minerals. And the power. So, yeah. Oh, ho, ho. I'm not yawning. I'm not yawning at all. Oh, you see? It blinked out. It was like, boop, boop, and took off faster than light. All of their brains turned to jelly. Ah, your brain's already made out of jelly, silly. What's going on here? Wait, what's happening here? Yeah, you're going to go there, and then there. Then I want you to re survey there. And then after that, um, I think the lights are blinking for some reason. I'm not sure why. I don't know, I like this. This is nice. See, like, when they're not so bright, when the lights... I mean, how, what do you guys think? The lights aren't so bright. I think it looks great. doesn't look like my face is being melted off. Ben doesn't come out looking like he spent, like, five days in the Arizona sun. You know. That'll happen. Uh, you let me know when you want me off, Ben. Ben's, like, getting, like, like working so hard right now, trying to get this thing rolling. How's it going on? Oh, wow. That's a setup and a half. Was, are we going to do an adventure today? Oh, okay. I don't know. Oh, nice. Okay. It's going to be story time. Awesome. I hope you guys are down for the story. My brain is peanut butter. Haha, -ha, mine is jelly. Together we make 
Yeah, peanut butter mixed with some jelly. Uh, I don't know. We need some bread. Uh, I enjoy some crunchy peanut. I do too. Crunchy peanut butter is the best. In fact, I'm gonna have to hit up Mr. Robert D and request that we always have peanut butter and jelly and bread on the premise at all times. That way, nobody can ever go starving. So, as well as like a big thing of like powdered like like Kool Aid, right? Oh no, even better. That country lemonade that's in that powder that you get at Costco's, that big cylinder of 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 what is claimed to, what they claim to be lemonade, um, that would be sick. Oh, we got another! Yay! Oh, and we no, we can't build a colony yet. Pause. Research. Okay, Capitol buildings now produce one extra unity. Yes. Bam. So now we're doing three. Okay. Uh oh. I need to build a couple more. I know I just said you don't have to build um, fighters and stuff, but well, actually I don't want to because we're not done yet. With it. I want to be cheap. Yo, I used to love that stuff, dude. That stuff was great. Like, okay, you remember the beef chimichangas, like the pasado kind of chimichangas at like Costco's with their like beef taquitos, man. I used to live off of that stuff. Like as a kid, man, it was just like that, and like their 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 French bread pizzas. I mean, I'm not saying I was healthy. I mean, I was actually extremely healthy. I played way too many sports, so that stuff flew through me. But, like, ah, if I lived off of that now, I'd be dead in six months. It wouldn't even be funny. So, but uh, it's good food as far as, like, if you want something quick. Um, but, yeah, the chimichangas from Costco's. Yeah, right? Like, come on. Uh, what else is amazing? Uh, from Costco's specifically, man, I don't want to get into it. That 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 whole place is dangerous for me. Walking into a Costco's is like, just here's my money, go away, take it. I'm gonna walk out with a whole bunch of stuff. I'm not gonna be able to finish in a hundred years. What did I just discover? Say yay, Caro Law. All right, we'll say that's a word. Shows every sign of having been a thriving Eurasian colony. Uh world up until approximately 1.2 million years ago. Given their age, the ruins found so far on the moon's surface are in fairly good condition. Uh, there are no signs of orbital bombardment or armed conflict. The Eurasian colonists appear to have succumbed to the Javorian, the Javorian, Javorian, the Javorian, the Kavorkian, uh, Pox, after which the aggressive native flora reclaimed the lifeless cities and hid them under a dense layer of vegetation. Curious. Okay, so we're slowly unraveling the mystery of these Eurasians. This is a lost race that died, we're assuming by this Javorian pox, but we're not sure yet. Gluten-free. When I became GF, I lost a ton of weight. Oh, gluten-free? Cool. I'm just going to start moving more and not sitting on my giant rear end as much. Um, I did pretty good. I actually did kind of go for a bit of a jog today at the Y, and then I was like, no, I smell like butt, so then I went to wash my butt. Um, curious. Um, cause you gotta wash, yo. Anyway. Um, what are we doing here? What is my name? What is happening? I have, like, events going on. No, I have no events happening here. Research. Pushing along nicely. We have a construction ship constructing thing, a science thing, sciencing things. We have a planet that's planeting things, and a navy that's navying things. Oh, construction ship done. Cool. All right, so now we're going to bring you here. Move here. Oh, no. We're going to move you here. Move here. Um, You're good. You're good. Okay, so did anything... Did we get... Did Homeboy come up? Yes, he did. All right, so Homeboy's here. We're going to put a power plant there so Homeboy can start building more power for us. Because, you know, that's what happens. You build energy. Duh. Um, we're going to research that because we should. Uh, gross. How are we doing with food here? We have a surplus of seven. In general, yes, we do. Research is complete. Oh, my God. See, this is what happens when you're ruler of the galaxy. Like, one thing finishes, you're like, oh, cool, I can work. And then everything else finishes. You're like, oh, my gosh. I just colonized the planet and reorganized the entire political structure of uh, my species. And now I got to, ah, uh, uh, that's what happens. 
In fact, I guarantee you right now, world leaders around the world are going, ah, but then I, ah, and then I, ah. Get a Z's on, sorry on that one. Um, so what do we actually finish researching? We finished researching energy storage capacity and the energy grid. So what we need to do is, I like putting those on something that is one here, one. So we'll change it to here, from, put it on this one. Now we could put it here, which would also give it a plus one to bonus, because I don't think we can, that was research, what the hell was I doing? Uh, what were we done with? Oh, we already did that. What's going on here? Nothing. See, this is what happens. This is how wars get started, folks. This is what this is. This is how global conflicts happen. Somebody just it. In fact, World War One, I, I think, was started because somebody didn't read a letter in time. Like seriously, that's what happened. I, in fact, I, and in fact, I remember reading about how like somebody just didn't get this letter about, hey man, don't worry about it. It's all good here. And the other guy's like, no, that guy's a jerk. And then he goes to attack. And then like a week later, he like thumbs through all these like papers that he had on his desk, and he's like. Oh, he actually wasn't a jerk. He totally was going to give me back that quick. And, like, he didn't. But, you know, whatever. We bombed his city. Okay. I guess we'll just keep going with this. Don't tell anybody. You know, that's how that's how the world is run. I don't know if you know that. But I... I'm telling you. I'm sharing this. Sharing my centuries of knowledge. All one-third of my centuries of knowledge. Um... Man, we got eight months until unification is complete. We got twelve. We got a whole year before we can start improving our spaceport. We got eh, four months before five, six. Now, now we have five months until we have to actually do that. I think I'm going to save now. I think this is a good time to save. And I think we have. Who, who's coming up next? Mel Melakaya, Melakaya's toy box. So you got to see. Um, my toy box, which is a software toy box. Um, go back to the menu. Um, and now you're going to see uh, a grown man's actual toy toy box. Isn't that exciting? So without further ado. Uh oh, this one. Oh, it was on. It's on. All right. Yeah. Hey, what's going on, guys? <laughs> Good to see you. Good to be seen. Welcome to Mel Kaya's Toy Box. I'm James Jerome. This is my buddy, Coop. Hello. Hello. How are you doing today? Yeah, man, we just actually uh, here on the set, actually just trying to actually just talk about some awesome creations. Uh, Stan Winston's uh, Realm of the Claw. Now, you know me, I'm just one that kind of thinks outside the box, and you know, I'm a cat lover. You can imagine what's going through my head right now. Um, I'm just going to do some of uh, my discussion and what things and whatnot. I'm going to do an unboxing tonight. Um, as you can see, I got five in the collection here that's unboxed, but this guy here needs a little freedom so we're gonna go over storyline and um tonight is uh kind of actually going to be an interesting little deal because uh in the shuffle on the way over here with all this stuff i ended up actually losing a portion on uh one of the figures in which tonight just on a spontaneous i'm gonna um try to recreate the portion that i lost of this particular figure and we'll go over that in a bit on what that actually is but anyway we're gonna actually uh Start talking about the storyline here. Basically, it's Stan Winston's Realm of the Claw. We have a storyline of six cat warriors, basically. Uh, it kind of was the uh, an origin of the, since the beginning of time with animals, uh, where there was a kind of like of a Garden of Eden type of setting where mankind was involved as well. But the uh, question was, who was going to rule the animal kingdom? And as we got like in a brief little summary here in this realm of this, uh, can we go ahead, Coop? Let's go and show him in the uh, beginning, man. The, basically the, the core of the beginning of the storyline. And we kind of discuss, basically, as the storyline was put here, we're um, actually going to talk about a little, you know, spinoff, you know, of, of what could have actually actually occurred as well. Or some things that was really not as um, 
detailed in the comic book to actually show a visual on where it was actually going. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Um, basically, to give an overview, this comic book basically shows a, a family setting of cats here. Basically, you have Nakaru. Nakaru is a father of the two sons, Juana and Ter. Okay? Um, the storyline begins actually with Nakaru and this actual guy here, Sabir, in the storyline. They were the first two cats in uh, aiding in an actual battle for man. Uh, as time went on, one got greedy, you know the storyline, and the, uh, the other one just actually stayed, uh, you know, heroic. And now you have your division of um, cat warriors actually just battling against each other, yet still representing the entire animal kingdom, you know, on, their, on each side. Um, in this comic book here, as you see on the pages, basically it talks about these cat warriors they were actually um, in another life. They lived another life where they were actually human. Okay, and one of the brothers was actually a zookeeper who uh, was really friendly with the animals and in a, in a real miraculous way. And a lot of uh, zoo visitors were actually amazed in some of the things he could do with the animals. You know, he almost talked. He could talk with them. He actually rescued a boy out of a lion's den who had fallen over into the den. And uh, everybody seen him actually just talk to the lions and calm them down. So he had a love for animals, and that's this guy here, as you see here, the flip page. <laughs> so basically, as he's going on in the storyline, it shows him the guy who's really just like really gifted, being able to actually communicate with animals and uh, and all that good stuff. He's at the zoo and uh, he has high rank. Uh, basically, some things go on where he has a brother who's actually this big like millionaire, whatnot. He flipping. This guy actually is basically his. Uh, Brother, this, this is, okay, right now we're actually jumping back to the beginning. As you can see there on the right, you see uh, Sabir, saber tooth tiger, and his brother right next to him, Nakaru, uh, the, the cougar. And uh, basically, as this is basically explaining at the beginning of time when they actually had their battle. And uh, as it goes on, they've, uh, as the action figures actually says a statement, kind of gives it up a poetic uh, summary, and it differs from the comic book, is... Uh, let me go ahead and pull one back here. We're going to read this. The legend, Realm of the Claw. At the dawn of creation, the world was jungle. Beast roamed free and the earth was wild. And then there came creatures, an unraveled power. They were lords of the realm. The wise wind blew and the elders, Nakaru and Sabir, were born. Fire struck down from the heavens and brothers, the Swana and Ter, appeared. Water swirled and out of its tides, the sisters Kayla and Zinda. Now the sides of good and evil must battle over who will rule in the animal kingdom. It's pretty cool if you actually look at it. But see, what we got here is, you know, you're going to see in this comic here. Just go ahead and flip through, man, because we're really not going to read it. It's too thick. Uh -huh, yeah. So <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, we're just giving a rough overview. So basically... Um, it goes in and out of these lives of these, basically, in the beginning of the story, these two brothers here. Takes it back to when they were in human form. Uh, this guy's a billionaire. He's so rich, whatever. You know, he's, he's actually finding that these guys, one of the guys were adopted. I'm not sure who, which one it was. It kind of tells in there. Yeah, it was the other brother um, with the dreads. Yeah, it was the... Okay, yeah. yeah. That's basically the, the, the black dude, you know, yeah. the dreads. He was adopted, to, you know, since some money. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, they was good. So, in another life, they basically had this rivalry where they were um, cats. And one thing I found interesting about this, um, this rivalry here is there's a symbol that kind of like gives a, <laughs> it represents Realm of the Claw together. And then, you know, it's like, um, if you really look at this symbol, mm -hmm. it kind of gives you like a, an idea of like the Thundercats, the way it was created. Oh, you know okay. what I mean? Let me go ahead and show it. If I can get a camera in there. What's the camera? See that there? Oh, yeah. Right here. You know, it actually, uh -huh. um, if you take this part out, and of course you use the painted red, you have like a Thundercat symbol. But what they've done is that they're showing what the, these cats actually actually have as far as their inner spirit. You got the, it's almost a symbolism of a yin and yang if you look at it. The good and evil. Okay. So good and bad mm -hmm. within the cat. So it's like, boom, boom, you got two Thundercats. I think it's probably pretty tight. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So Absolutely. that was cool, man. Um, that back there. But um, what I was doing here is I was looking at, uh, I was online one day, and I was actually looking at the, uh, I don't know if you heard of Slate, 
I'm saying that correctly. Slate or Sleech. Oh, okay. It's a toy line. Okay. That basically uh, releases like all type of like statue like type deals. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you're looking at these guys here as animal warriors, you know, um, yeah. you think of like other animals that can actually be of, you know. Like a, like a wolf pack per se? Yeah. Or like, a, okay. Like, you yeah. know, kind of like, like a. Like elephants. Yeah. The possibilities, okay. Yeah, type of warriors like that. Like, He-Man stretched out like that. Oh, He-Man. Okay, gotcha. They made some, you know, yeah. elephants type warriors and stuff. They kind of got out the box. Yeah. You know, like, a, you know, gator, monkey, you know what I mean? Okay. Something like, um, if you look at the Thundercats, you kind of pretty much got a whole representation. When you say the mutants, that's a consolidation of different animal species. Yeah. That's warriors as well, um, besides cat. So I think that's pretty okay. articulate. Yeah. So what I've done is I went and I actually checked these things out online, man. I just had to have them. First, the spinoff, I was actually like, if you got here in this storyline, mm -hmm. and uh, each one of these figures here, they come with a collection card. Oh. And um, on each one of the cards here, as you see right here on Kayla, if you yeah. flip this card here, I left their cards at home. Flip oh, okay. the card. Yeah. It gives you what their powers are, you know, who they are, what, what not. It gives you summary of uh, a little bio, you know. Oh, okay. And um, it talks about their species of cat. So uh -huh. this guy here is a panther. Uh -huh. As you can see here, she's a cheetah. Okay. Anakaru is actually a cougar. Zinda is a caracal link. Caracal. And when it comes to Tear, they actually said that he's an albino leopard. That's why you don't see no spot. Oh. And he's, uh, you know, he's albino. Wow. But look at his face, man. Now, as you notice, <laughs> mm -hmm. most of the figures here got their calm face, you know what I mean? Yeah. When which they both have duo heads. You can actually take one head off and put another one on and show their aggressive side, you know? Yeah. But now, his calm face is actually, like, really evil, man, if you can take a look at it. Oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah, he's, of course, he's the bad guy, so, you know. Oh, okay. Anyway, nevertheless, you, you see these, I named these species of um, cat with these guys because when I found on the slate online, mm -hmm. you got this lion type warrior. Now, these guys are not nowhere near the size of this, but had they been, look at the yeah. detail on that. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is oh, a lion very, warrior. This guy right here is pretty tight. Now, the sword I added, mm -hmm. I, mean, I took it off one of my little ninja warriors and like, Let me give him another one. Oh, gotcha. So, yeah, this is his deal. So, what we're going to do, we're going to leave him right here. Okay. So, he's looking like big like everybody else. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And then right here, you got this tiger warrior. Look at that, man. Wow. You know what I mean? Amazing. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I wish I actually, what I've done, I haven't got too much into spinning off with these. Yeah. Though I actually um, did <laughs> make an advancement of an an extra to uh, be able to just to, uh, I didn't know if I wanted to put them in spots, but this is before I actually came into Tanaka, uh, Swana here. Oh. Made a panther. Painted oh. this guy black and gave him a stoop this way. A little dusty right now. And they put another claw on him. He has this weapon here to gouge your eye out. So, yeah. Oh, Imagine right, that. Too. Yeah, so how many different weapons um, do Four each Four fathers warrior? of the Thundercats. How many different weapons? Yeah, how many different weapons do each warrior have? Well, these two had the panther and the lion where it has three. Oh, okay. This guy only had managed to have two. Okay. Is there like a special tactic that, um, that they, um, any of the weapons have any kind of special, um, like any kind of special use of them or anything that's mm, probably did? Nothing other than nothing. It's just a general medieval kick-ass. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. That's pretty much it. Yeah. That's magical about it. These guys here um, are kind of a different story, but you know, I was really get into just being able to just like really generate some stuff, man. Of course, we would change that up. Everybody would have like different elemental powers and stuff like that. Oh, okay. But yeah, awesome. but check this out. You got the cat warriors here. I was kind of representing these guys here, you know, overall. Now we know this is good and evil, but I'm just kind of doing a little yeah. side deal of a spin off real quick. You know what I mean? We're going to get back to these guys oh, and what I have planned for the evening. But look, if you look at these guys too, see, this is going to be some nemesis. Look at this guy. He's a, he's a ram. Oh, wow. Look at his weaponry. Oh, that's amazing. Show me detail. Now, if you look at this guy, if you were to wonder what his style of fighting would be, what would you say? Well, yeah, let's see what kind of weapons he got there. He got... And look at his posture. Look at him. Oh, he definitely look like a samurai. Well, he's kind of tactical. He looks tactical. Yeah. He looks like somebody who actually try to, you know, really outsmart his opponent. Oh, absolutely. Get in there. He looks like he bounces around on his hooves a little bit, too. Light on the feet. Yeah. Yeah, you know Martial I mean? artist style, I call it. Um, yeah, you can tell. Yeah. And then uh, if you look at this guy here, Big. Oh, look, 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 look. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh. Now this guy looks like he can just be 
kind of beast mode on them. Yeah, Probably just, slow. What do you think? Yeah, they look like, like the African Congo gorilla. Just, yeah, he's a, uh, silver, he's a diamondback or silverback, no doubt. Silverback, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, look at this. So we put another sword. Actually, this sword came with him. This was his sword. So he came oh, with wow. this weapon. Pretty much his uh, gigantic blade here. Yeah. And this big metallic arm. Look at that arm. Oh, all right. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Slap you with that, man. What you think is going to happen? Oh man, it's 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 a done deal. Get up, slap yeah, the woman, yeah. say, make me some grits. I'm just <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So we got the big old gorilla dude here. Oh, now cool. you look at this dude. Oh, oh big, the gator. Big gator head. Look. I tell you what. Almost kind of <laughs> look like uh, I'm blocking him a little Swamp bit. Swamp gator, uh, yeah. It's, it's uh, nice. uh, what's that guy off the Ninja Turtles? Oh, leather face, uh, leather head. Oh, okay, <laughs> gotcha. But this guy's, you know, he, he pretty much has alligators, as you know, they pretty much got a armor on their skin so he's pretty much he's pretty much set oh that's very nice that one that can bash you got a tail that can slap you yeah. and a blade that'll impale you whatever that so will give you the idea to create like um the the attire the the, the, uh, the armor they carry um the just something armor? yeah the, the well, body I, armor the these right here i didn't take oh okay no, i would never get on a show and act and say what i created when i didn't but i actually took one of the guys here and converted him into a panther oh he was a tiger before okay. Oh, maybe. But yeah, I'm just showing the spin off here. We're gonna do, we're gonna get into that old. Side in a second. Wait. Look at this guy. He's a dragon. Oh, nice. Like some kind of like Komodo. Yeah. But then what I like about him is like, bam, he can open that mouth. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, uh. That's real dragon like warrior that. there. You know what I'm saying? He looks intimidating. I wouldn't want to run him into, oh, absolutely. Run into him in the alley. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of hot, man. It's pretty tight. Absolutely. Last but not least, we got the Rhino. Now, you know he's probably dumb as all can get out. Because, you know, <laughs> Rhino's <laughs> played to be stupid. Yeah. Every Rhino character you've ever seen. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Representing whatever, whether it be Spider-Man or whatever. I uh, like, was that? Rocksteady uh, Rock from, from, from Ninja yeah. Turtles, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he's a dummy. He's a dummy, so. Yeah, he's kind of like, you know, slow but yet powerful. Don't let him catch you. Oh. He swings his axe on you. It's like, yeah. you know, it's a wrap. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Uh, what we're gonna do i actually have uh um, severe here the storyline going back to the whole realm of the claw thing and if you look at these warriors here that i've actually just showed you in this comic book even with the storyline it shows different animals in battle with the cats uh -oh. humans Absolutely. at some point in time in the storyline um so kind of got like a visual what that, what that was kind of like uh, so basically it shows here in this part of the book here this guy here, Terror, um, as you can see in his early times before he actually received his clothes, uh, probably at the beginning of the time as a creation, mm -hmm. um, he actually did a task where he actually reached his hand. You see on his uh, left side there, uh, he's burned. Oh, yeah, you got yeah. it, his hand is actually blackened where he actually reached into a lava pit to oh, retrieve wow. a certain type of blade. Oh, wow. And all the rage and anger he has in him actually allow him to do it before it's coming back with a physical altercation of some sort but not much but um figure doesn't really specify basically showing a burnt hand whatever just, oh, okay just so that's, right here. that's one right there okay yeah wow. so <clears throat> so the thing is go ahead and flip it we're looking at basically where they're fighting um the bear comes to him with an ideal of overruling um i don't know exactly where they got into a little altercation where tear actually took a tear at his face mm -hmm. But um, that ends up being his ace combo. You know, they actually become partners in trying to overrule things. Right. That's causing uh, his brother Tswana to actually intervene mm -hmm. with, with the aid of Kayla and Nakaru. Wow. Let's flip it up. So it takes you back right here into their, their life when they were actually human. And of course, as a human, he's having these visions of being this cat uh, who, that, who you, in which who he really is. Oh, um, yeah. They kind of give you... Uh, the idea that the comic book is um, not so much as I wouldn't say the comic book, but the story is saying that their human lives is more or less a vision and a dream. Mm -hmm. And their actual true existence is these cat warriors is uh -oh. here, you know. Okay. So, yeah. Absolutely. We're looking at it. And I uh, thought it was pretty cool. They've actually released this comic in like, uh, I think, four or three, two to three different issues. Uh -huh. Which I got them too. And once I found this, I was like, oh, yeah. Be easy to just kind of just flip through and yeah. it's all, all in one. So here we go. Uh, as you can see here, some they are actually networking 
Uh, Sabir over there is looking like we well, just, just, just he looks evil. He looks mean. So you already know he's saying something crazy like "Let's take over the world" or something. Oh, so, yeah. You know that kind of thing. So that's it. And then look at look at my little albino my uh, leopard. Absolutely. Yeah, he tripping, tear. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> it's just crazy, uh, and absolutely. it's going on and on and on. So we get, I guess, toward the. Uh, Here's flip, flip, you, thank you. If you if you get to our see pretty much, and then they, this is where it shows they hook up with Zinda. Yeah. Um, and Zinda's like straggler. She has some kind of loyalty to, I believe, uh, Swana or not Swana, um, Tear, mm. at some point in the story. So she ends up falling after this. So that's being this. You can see that this is like the first trio of cat decided to go in one direction. Oh, okay. I don't know if we actually got to a point to where. Um, yeah, actually, it, it comes to that. Yeah, they start terrorizing. See, he's going after like the monkey guy killed that dude. Yeah, so it was just some um, one looks very dominant. It looks like he's. Uh, yeah, that's the beard. That's the guy we're gonna unbox tonight. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're gonna set him up on his platform and say, "Welcome to the feline, partner." Oh, awesome. So yeah, <laughs> bring him in. Can't wait. Yeah, so yeah, he's yeah, tossing yeah. dudes. You know what I mean? And it shows at some point too. If you look in the storyline, I don't know if it passes already, but yeah. it's like um, they show him where he actually goes through a portal where he's actually into the human world. Oh, okay. Where Tiswana and Terry is as humans, you know what I mean? So he goes in. Because mind you, as we can get uh we get through the story, yeah. in the beginning, Kayla actually uh morphed herself to be uh, a human gal that actually went after Swana as a zookeeper in the human realm. Oh, okay. To actually make him wake him up and be aware of who he was in the animal kingdom and that they need him back. Yeah. Come back to his senses because things are getting chaotic. Oh, and he okay. needs to overtake his throne. He needs to actually come back and reclaim. Oh, okay, absolutely, um, yeah. Nakaru was the king, but he left the birthright in Swana's hand. It's pretty much in a brief overview, basically, yeah. was that's what's going on. Yeah, but they show, this, huh? yeah, this believe this word, yeah, where she was going for, looking for at the zoo or some other. Yeah. Yeah. He jumped over that fence. He was like, oh, man, cat people. Yeah. 80s version when she jumped up the creek. <laughs> Yes, yes. Absolutely. So that was pretty cool, man. Yeah. So as we actually hitting here, you're going to see uh, the beer here. This dude right here actually is uh, really interesting because uh, he's a beast, man. Oh, man. I've been waiting for a minute to actually unbox this dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, as you see here, we got an extra Zinda and oh. Kayla. Oh. Uh, though I can't, nice. I could do the platforms, but as you can see, they're only, probably the only two that don't have their own platforms. Mm -hmm. And the reason that reason why that is is because i used them as um a nice elemental uh decoration oh, for okay. the uh, thundercat throne that i actually came up with yeah you know those uh, three and a half inches that i've been messing with yeah so if you look here zenda has a i don't want to open it right now you you can't see it oh yeah you can a little bit see there's like a cat face it's like a little oh. art oh absolutely. you know what i mean it's like yeah. a little pathway and it has a symbol of the uh, actual round of the ball, you know, good and evil deal you see, but it's gold and black. Yeah. And just in the walkway right here, mm -hmm. I got Claudius. I have Lionel's father. Oh, wow. Standing in there with his cape and with his, you know, his bronze look and he's looking all royal and stuff. And yeah. So I thought that was cool, man. It would be like a little something you can add to the TCs. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, that, whatever, yeah. man. See it how we want to. So she don't got one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was her. And then I got some, um, some lions actually sit up on her actually platform like a throne oh. and um yeah man oh, yeah, but without further ado nice. i'm actually going to unbox this dude oh okay question man what's up yeah talk to me so you gonna like um change up anything on this particular character no or? with this dude here i don't know he's just gonna be as is oh, okay. long time in waiting man he was hard to find man yeah. it was hard to find yeah. i finally caught up with him Okay. It's amazing. I'll tell you the story how I ran into these. Wow. These figures, I believe, came out in um, 2002, I think. Oh, okay. I was in a common Toys R Us in the Fresno area. Yeah. And um, walked in there, man, looked on the back of the shelf. In the back of the toy area, just on the side, when you're actually walking through the back aisle, yeah. you see all these figures actually hanging up. And <clears throat> there was only like three in collection. You know, you basically oh, had wow. Zinda, you had Kayla, yeah. and you had Nakaru that was sitting up there in the packages. And I was looking, oh, wow. I was like, oh, wow. And, you know, mm -hmm. I'm just, man, I'm, I'm big on cat. That's my thing. Okay. I love cats. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anything that's kind of like cat, cat, you know what I mean? Predatorial mm -hmm. cat. Get it, get it. Cat. Anyway, mm -hmm. check it out. I seen him. And I just went crazy. Wow. I was like, ooh. So it had to happen, man. Wow. So immediately I started looking. If there's this three, I yeah. started looking behind them. <laughs> yeah. Like there, I know there's probably more. What kind of what other stuff do they have? 
Uh, and I didn't see anything but these three figures I mentioned just now. Yeah. And I um, happened to just pick up a box and look on the back. I found that there was like six in the collection. Wow. You know, right here. Like this, six in the collection. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you can kind of even see like that. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, so I got to get them. Yeah. Man, I'm telling you, it wasn't, it wasn't until... I'd say, oh, let me watch this guy. It wasn't until actually, I'd say maybe, oh, maybe a month or two ago, yeah. maybe. Well, we're in, uh, in 2017. Yeah, 2017 then I finally now. Yeah. <laughs> walked into a collector uh, store and saw Swana and Tear on the on the uh, on the racks with uh, Zinda and Kayla. The only one that was missing mm -hmm. was uh, Nakaru. They had, uh, they didn't have a uh, Tear uh, Severe neither. Oh, wow. They didn't have severe neither. So yeah. I had asked him about it. He said, man, I just sold that one. I was like, darn. Wow. So I actually I got by with just being able to get these two. That was oh. great because okay. it's been so long and waiting, man. Yeah. Um, I know people have had them online, but, man, you know, you know pretty, pretty mm. steep, bro. Yeah. Yeah, so um, buying this guy finally online. Mm. That was on. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, and so what turned you price. on to what turned you on to Thundercats? Like, and what, what made you gain the interest of the whole entire just theme of Thundercats? Um, well, I've always been an animal lover. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. All together. Okay. Yeah. I love animals. I was just I can remember actually going to like stores with my mom. You know, and they would get, she would buy those little little uh, plastic packages of little animals that represent like the fox, the cow, the chicken, whatever. Okay. Whether it be farm theme or yeah. wilderness theme or whatever. Anyway, long story made short. Get, I would always love animals, man. Like full stop. Yeah, okay. Play with them, set them up, whatever. Yeah. Just kid. Yeah. But I always favorite the cat. Oh. You know. Okay. And then when you learn the cats, man, you know, top predators, man. These guys are rule. Man. There's a cat for every element of the world. Pretty much top of the top of the food chain is a, is a predator or whatnot. It all depends, you know. Grizzlies actually mm -hmm. kind of have a, a good ranking, but for the most part, you know, cats is the that's where it's at, man. Oh, awesome. I seen a cougar kick a grizzly's butt one time, by the way. <laughs> so, uh, grizzly, yeah, grizzlies ain't all that. They ain't all that. I love grizzlies too. Uh, but uh, we're gonna unbox this dude. But yeah, Thundercats, man. Uh, I always had the idea, like, I was thinking that, you know. Yeah, I was gonna say, so you figured that they're, like, they're, all their instincts, they all have a certain type of instinct of within, like, um, their selves as characters that yeah. matches with the cat. Oh, like, exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay. And that's what makes it really, like, unique about yeah. the storyline. You can build a storyline off that, because what you see, think about it. Yeah. You have these cat heroes, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. that, that are basically, according to nature, uh, what a, a certain particular species of cat is able to do, what oh. he's known for. Okay. You know, lions being leaders, you know, being rulers or whatever. Yeah. Cheetahs being quick, you know what I mean? Real stealth, stealthy. Yeah. Uh, leopards being silent, real strong, you know, able to cli climb up a tree with their prey. That takes strength to be able to get up oh, into a tree. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So, yeah. you know, you look at lionesses, they can pursue leopards up trees, you know, they probably can't climb as well because they're not as endured, but mm -hmm. they get it done. Uh -oh. But you see, the leopard can actually go on thin branches and you can pull his prey all the way up behind yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. They, 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 when they run, they stretch. They, they really have a long stride, don't oh, they? they all, yeah, most that's cats right. do, but the one who has the longest stride is a cheetah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Covering over like, like a top speed at 70 miles per hour. Wow. Yeah, but so, you know, you see Chitara's all quick and stuff like cheetahs would be. Yeah. And all that good stuff. And then um, we're going to take his deal here. We okay. have his collection card here. And you see... Uh, like so that's why they indicated panthro having so much strength on the show you notice that uh, panthro is like the strongest thundercat okay. you know yeah. so they were indicating the strength that it takes for a leopard to get up a tree and kind of indicating that he would probably be one of the stronger cats so we know a tiger or a lion yeah. probably be stronger according to in law's nature the yeah. nature of law uh the laws of nature oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you got what i'm saying yeah. but uh yeah man so and then tiger you know uh tigers are excellent swimmers Oh, absolutely. You know, there were a couple okay. of episodes in the Thundercats that I paid attention to where it actually emphasized on Tiger's, Tiger's swimming ability. Oh, amazing. Okay. You know, yeah, so he was... Uh, Definitely teaches, uh, then, teaches you a, a Of course, good, his like, mystical power has been able live. to actually cloak himself from, you know, being oh, visible. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, man. So, they put um, a little twist into it to make it, yeah, what it is. But uh, they'll bring out one of their common characteristics or something that they, a trait that they carry. Yeah. And that, so, okay. You know. yeah, that's amazing. That's definitely a yeah, good way to learn. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, man, dude. So we're gonna move that. Oh, absolutely. So right now, and we're gonna move this too. Uh, oh. We're gonna get to it, baby. Awesome. Look at this dude right here, man. I can't wait to undo him. 
Ooh, we been a long time in waiting. Uh, so yeah, man. Oh, see. Oh, interesting point. In most figures mm -hmm. that you open, you notice the packages. Yeah. They actually have not only the imprint of the plastic for the figure to fit in, of course, mm -hmm. but you got the back end here where it actually has holes that were drilled. Wow. And you got the ties that actually go through that's holding the figure down. Mm, wow. And it's holding down to the back. But if you have to, you know, if you want to release the figure, of course, you got to undo the ties back. Yeah. But I bring this up because I found these to be really interesting. And we're going to talk about what I found they're used in, in a little bit. Okay. So you basically got this little black stringy here. You probably can't even see it, but it's really thin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. This sucker, as thin as it is, is very strong. Wow. If this was large, in order to tie you and me up, yeah. we would never get free. Wow. That like almost like a hanger wire. Oh, uh, this, that, this, this, this stuff is strong. Uh, uh, really strong. Uh, wow. It's annoying because you really can't get to the figure quick enough. Mm, amazing. But you wouldn't need to unless you're trying to steal it. Oh, okay. So being that we don't steal, yeah. we don't steal. <laughs> It'd be a positive message. Oh, absolutely. For, for, the, for the show, don't steal. Yeah. Yes. Children do so, not steal. It's never a good thing. It's a crime. Nah, it's very <laughs> much a crime. Very much so. What we do is earn. Absolutely. And we. Okay, so as you can see, what I'm saying is, it's the always the case scenario with these ties. Oh wow. You think you've done them all, undone them all. Oh, and it'd be and one more <laughs> right there. In it's the like uh, really, dude. Come on. Oh yeah, I think I see. Why one you want to hold on to the finger? <laughs> You let us know. Okay. Um, but, which really wasn't his case right now, but you, you gave him a drift because that's normally the case. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh. I stand wow. corrected. Wow, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we just undo him. Uh, we just undo him. <laughs> it looks like here, wow. The snake that's attached to his chest. Oh. Has a tie. Whew. See, I just missed these nice. all together. Man. Yeah, we're gonna free him up. All right. All right. Oh yeah, Papa. Go ahead. Tim and stuff now. Wow, that's pretty cool. It has a snake, mm. a big cobra-looking thing with a chain. Wow, amazing. A rib cage and a look at that—a skeleton hand. <laughs> like like yeah. somebody got eaten or something. Wow. And then what man. else is that? Oh yeah, human skull. Oh, yeah, this dude is nice. indicating this dude is bad, man. Oh, okay. Yeah, look Got at that. Got one more tie on his leg. Look at that. Leader of the pack right there. <laughs> yeah, so this right here is kind of in the way. Uh, Being done like that. Let me get this here. This is his weapons and stuff, which I'm gonna release in a sec here. Oh, okay. But I need to get this tie off his leg. Because I want to get this <laughs> tie off his arm. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, right. yeah. we finally get the um, box. Let the cat out of the box. Wow. Cat out of the bag today. And he, he, he has another tie. You see Oh, it? man. Now yeah, tell me why I missed all this. Because I thought basically all the ties were... Never mind. <laughs> yeah, look like you still have one. About four or five more. <laughs> making sure this cat don't get stolen. Hey. <laughs> I mean, and then you know what? And the thing, confusing thing about it, like you never know which way to really go because it looks. There we go. Oh. Yeah. Twisting it the wrong way for a while. Oh wow, yeah. Uh, it's still fine, you know, real small. So anyway, I'm gonna take these ties though. After I free my cat. Oh. Welcome to the world, Sabir. Awesome. Saber tooth tiger warrior. Yeah. Warrior mm -hmm. destruction. You see his face. Mm -hmm. So he comes with his aggressive face. Okay. You know, if you look here, we're going to release this here. I'm going to take these ties here. Let's do this. We're going to read off his collection card. Uh, okay. Any any of them, these are animals, um, uh, characters in relationship? Yeah, they actually are. Uh, okay. The Beard and Nakaru are actually brothers. Oh, okay. So what comes around now, when these two guys are born, these are, some, these are Nakaru's sons. Oh, wow. That's what the comic book is indicating. Okay. Was, these are his boys in the um, actual animal kingdom. Wow. Okay. And so that's being his sons, of course, Sabir being their uncle. Now, I don't know exactly where Kayla and Zinda come in as far as relation. I think they're just some kind of chicks that was hanging out. 
Mm. And I'm getting caught up in the feline clique. Oh, okay. But at some point, I'm sure it kind of explains basically their affiliation. Okay. Check this out. Here we're going to do this. So I'm, I'm assuming... Where did the chain go? Mm. I'm assuming his legs goes here. This guy is a beast, man. Yeah. I finally get to set him up on my shelf, man. Get this thing rocking. Maybe. Okay. So, we're gonna put him here. Okay. Maybe, uh, I don't know, since we got a little over here. The but you know what we can do? Mm -hmm. Nah, he's too far off. Want him to be seen. There you go, baby. Yep, there it is. Put him in the fold. Perfect. Put him in the fold. <laughs> Check it out. Yeah. Here, you wanna read off this card? Yeah, that's good. Can I read it? Yeah. I must wait to back. Oh, kind of give you a rough overview, basically, who this dude is. Let's see. Saber says classification. Saber tooth tiger. Alliance is evil warlock. Weapons, bone, spear, knuckle dagger. Special skill is summons. Summons a dark power called battle rage. Ooh. Element power is wind. He has yeah. an element power wind. Yeah. Let's see. It says the elder saber twins. Or trains, I mean, yeah, the Elder Saber trains the younger, more powerful Tar in the ways of evil. Although Saber has allied with the Tar in his plot to overtake the kingdom, Saber possibly has a secret plan for domination himself. Ah, the number okay. one formula of evil. Yeah. Non-cooperation, they start turning on each other after a while. Wow. So you can basically see it's the same storyline of... Megatron with Starscream. And, oh, okay. You know, uh, who else is that? Nobody ever really tried to over all oh, evil in with Skeletor. Try to take over. Oh, all right. So, yeah, right. Just, yeah. yeah. You know, so Thundercats um, got this. Yeah, so got, uh, Skeletors and, and the Transformers almost in the same. Treasonals. Yeah, similar characteristic. Yep, character. yep. I'm trying to think, though, this is uh, I think at some point he has this uh, knuckle claw. Oh, okay. That can actually go somewhere wow. on him rather than in his arm. Oh, okay. Um, because like you see her on Kayla, she actually has a slot where she um, has a blade, she has a little knife. Yeah. It can go right on her leg. Yeah. Walk oh. there. See that there? Right back right there. Oh, all right. Bam. Yeah, how many weapons does she have? Yeah, she looks like she only has blade. about two. Um, she actually has three. Three. There was one actually in the uh, other box. Oh, okay. 42, brother. Oh, yeah. Awesome. So yeah. All right. And we're gonna get into something I actually did for her in a second. Um, because as we're gonna cover some things, mm -hmm. I think this would be a good little stash. Oh yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Oh wow. Blade in the spot. Blade in the spot. Awesome. So this dude basically, they show him, man. I was bringing up earlier. I was talking about him actually crossing over into the human realm in a certain part of that comic. Yeah. And when he gets into the human realm, mm -hmm. he goes to a campfire. Was a bunch of guys, you know, sitting out in the wilderness, yeah. and actually, uh, one of the guys investigate a noise that they hear back over in some trees, and he's back there in this form. He ain't cloaked as a human, uh, and he waits on the guy. He just literally like picks the guy up and just rips him in half. Like it's wow. just nasty. The graphics and that thing right there was uh, kind of creep show us. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, man, it was pretty hot. Mm. So yeah, so yeah, we're um basically gonna show you here, um, in a case scenario. Where I mentioned earlier, um, I had um, lost uh, a particular part of one of the figures in the shuffle the way over here. I uh, will go over that in a second here, but just in the same token, mm -hmm. there was a case scenario where once I unboxed Kayla, yeah. I uh, I went to playing with her her other face, her head, uh -huh. and I was kind of readjusting it, taking it off, putting it on, taking it off, putting it on, in the and uh, the taking it off and putting it on, I actually managed to take the top of her uh, ponytail here yeah. off by accident. It popped right off. So oh. I broke it. Oh, oh wow. wow. Darn it. Wow. So what do, you know, I was thinking, like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Mm -hmm. But I didn't really, um, I tried the crazy glue back on, of course, you know, but in a couple of cases, it got to where, and if this is one thing you got to be careful about with crazy glue or super glue, yeah. um, if you apply it into a small enough area too many times and you just don't, you're not as successful with the stick, yeah. it'll tend to build up. 
Oh. And it, uh, it okay. just fill up a spot where you can really never get it to actually resurface in order to receive a glue stick. If you all warped and pushed out or whatever. So yeah. basically the tip of her head got to be that point where I couldn't put the ponytail back on. Oh, wow. And uh, try to carve it out and stuff like that. Bit of work with it. But before I actually decided I was going to pursue that on any further, mm -hmm. I actually seen the ponytail. Oh, wow. And when I was in the... Uh, <laughs> I was in the uh, mode of creating my uh, the Thundercat. Oh. When I made gotcha. Chitaro, I took that and made that his um, three and a half inch figure. It looks pretty cool as a ponytail. That's oh. indicating he's a cheetah, giving it the spots and the end of the tail effect that a cheetah has at the zip of his tail. Yeah. You know, kind of, you know, of course, with the tears and just indicating he the man. Bam. Oh, okay. So just a different way of, of a spin off of Chitaro. Oh, absolutely. You know, getting some men like that. But check this out. So basically, being she was going without a ponytail for a while, I took her other head and I took a. Uh, now this is a, this is a ponytail from a Spawn figure oh, wow. that I had, and it was uh, just basically the original look of this thing here. It had like like a little handle oh. at the end of it, like it could be like a little dust bump or something. Yeah. So I was like, that looks like hair. I, was like, I wonder why it looks like that. So I carved it off. Boom. Yeah. And I took it out and I actually painted it as close as I could to her skin tone or her fur color. Yeah. Oh, um, wow. That's nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just getting it in there as much as I could and kind of trying to pick up on the pattern of how the spots would look coming off that side of her head okay. at that point. Oh, you see wow. they're kind of small here at the top of the head, but kind of want to spin off into some hair going down. Yeah, I see that. So I gave her, you know, the same thing as the, the zip effect, lines, stripes, oh, okay. and uh, the ponytail. Yeah. So basically, this is Kayla's uh, alternate face oh. with a new type of ponytail. Oh, so, being that I'm, you know, I mess with that, I've already kind of got in mind that I'm gonna take this Kayla. Oh wow! And kind of just probably uh, try to transform her face as much as I can to be kind of more, um, I don't know, leopardish or cougarish. Oh, okay. uh, uh, Zinda probably would be a candidate for more of a cougar look. If I can actually get away, get away with some of her facial hair coming down off the sides indicating that she's a character or a link oh all right i don't know you know what i'm saying yeah so and trying to actually redo some stuff we uh that's in the mix right now so um yeah, this is like definitely, hair. yeah definitely brings her like um how i say she's a good girl right she's a good yeah hair, yeah it looks like it brings her a, a aggressive character or protection there yeah. mm -hmm. or yeah getting yeah. ready to zip on your ass <laughs> <laughs> yeah. zip, zip, zip. yeah speaking of zips yeah. okay check this out so this is what we, while we're actually on this mode, we're on this topic. Feel free to ask, man. Oh, absolutely. What's going on? I'm basically giving these guys, it's good to be back. We haven't streamed in a while mm -hmm. um, due to some issues and different things that have come up with, you know, family, whatnot. Uh, we're getting through some tough times, you know, um, but um, all is well. And so uh, I haven't been streaming for a while, but I've actually had this in the make for a while. I'm going to have some more interesting things coming up too. Mm -hmm. Wow. I think I'm gonna actually get you get your attention a little bit. Okay. Some cool little things going on. So I'm actually stretching these zips out here, right? You know, these ties right here out because when I actually was looking around, figuring how actually I was gonna um, make this portion mm -hmm. of the figure that I managed to lose. Oh, okay. Um, I had to look and see what was gonna best fit. It's you know, it's likeness, yeah. it's form. All oh, of that, okay. you know what I mean? Just kind of get creative. So, yeah. <laughs> I just so happen to have some ties like this here that actually came from the Justice League figures. Oh, wow. That span in this size. Okay. Um, it, was just, it was six Justice League figures, and basically each one of them came with the uh, tie. And the Justice League figures, which ones did you have? Or They're, um, it, uh, it's, the, it's the original Justice League. It actually shows you like how they look kind of like in the older days. Oh. Where Superman kind of just looked more like, I'm Superman. Oh, okay. Have the that original, like, the, like the 1980 specials? And probably like earlier than that. Like, like, oh, wow. Like, amazing. Okay. But they have it because Wonder Woman has that like old school Wonder Woman look. So does Green Lantern. Oh, kinda, my. So that's, they look like more like, of the, the, the pictures of so them kind of look like the guys in Hispanic. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> But the figures are cool, wow. you know, and it shows it has Batman, Superman, um, Aquaman, Flash, Wonder Woman, and Green Lantern. Oh, wow, okay. So basically, all those guys came with ties, and I was looking, and I was like, these things are hard to get off each one of these guys um, set up and displayed. Yeah. But I kept a tie. Wow. I kept a tie, so yeah. basically here, what I actually found, mm -hmm. let me pull this up here. And I hope, I hope I have 
and I do. And there they are. Okay. So basically, yeah, let me go ahead and move this here. And I take, uh, probably indicate I'm a guy, I gotta now I have to reveal what part of the figure that I actually lost. <laughs> oh, wow. yeah. All right. Well, That's if right. you guys noticed here, all of my cat warriors here, all these guys here, Sabed, for example, mm -hmm. indicating that he's, um, you know, he's a, he's a saber tooth tiger, so you know, this guy's a small tail. Oh, okay. That's his deal there. Wow. Um, thank you to Link. In the small tail. Okay. But now you have this both applies with Tear mm -hmm. and um, Swana. They have long tail. Oh, okay. See how long his tail is? Yeah. Now he's pretty much a straight back. It's pretty much his, this tail is pretty much like a straight out to the side type of deal. Really no detail to it. Yeah. But if you come over here, hold on, let me show you this. If you come over here, mm -hmm. you're going to see. Swana's tail. Oh wow. A little kind of a little more articulate, you know, indicating like a cat's tail. Yeah, absolutely. Nonetheless to say, <laughs> mm. in the shuffle on the way over here, I managed to lose Nakaru's tail. Now wow. you probably didn't notice this. Oh, Zinda, please stand to your feet. Mm -hmm. I need you at a attentive space. <laughs> here we go. Come on there. So yeah, yeah. gonna partner him up. I'm going to take right. Nakaru off his platform because he's going to be the dude that we're going to be messing with. Awesome. Let me put Tara back here. Hold on. Lay down, buddy. Oh, here she goes. She missed him. <laughs> she want to get some of that loving in. Get a kiss. And you lean up against your friend. And you grouchy, man. You stay right there. Okay, cool. Right. So, basically, you didn't probably notice this because Nakaru has, a, he has an actual cape. Yeah. <laughs> His tail was actually like hairs, uh -huh. but I didn't like it anyway. Uh, oh, okay. So what happened was, as I don't, as you can see, I don't really have a problem with these guys' tails staying on. Yeah. The tails can come off; they can easily detach. Oh, okay. Now, if you look back here, you know that. So yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> same way with me. <laughs> uh -huh. So basically, they have a little section here where the tail goes. You know, the tail goes. Yeah. And what I wanted to do, man, is I um. I need another tail. See, now here's the crazy thing about it. As soon as I make this tail, I'm going to make one today. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm going to find it. Oh, it's on okay. his own two feet. On two feet. Wow. So what I've done, let me show you how I'm going to do this. I already tried this out now. I think it'll work. Yeah. I took the ties off of the other Justice League figures, and these are the ones that I kept from them. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, so this is just uh, a couple of them. A lot of them worked on the way, to be honest with you. Yeah. Because this is all I got left on these. Oh wow! So, um, what was it one, two, three? Four. Yeah, this is some. But anyway, what I've done is I, I look at the tails, and you know these tails. One thing about them, they're not posable. Yeah. You can't pose the tails. Um, they're pretty much just as is. You know, with a curve, you're straight or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, what I was looking at is like, figure actually had one that was posable. That'd be oh. pretty cool. Okay. You actually bend them down a little bit like they want to put them in attack mode and kind of like make the tail a little wavery like they're getting ready to you know, yeah. pounce on something. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah, so okay. what I did, man, is um, I took these ties here. And what I'm going to do, kind of get a tighter fit. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Okay. Okay. Oh, I never put it back. Yeah, all right. <laughs> My razor blade. Hey. I never put it back. Oh, wow. I was using it to carve something out. I never put it back. Okay, so the idea is is to get these coils, these these ties here around something that's kind of very um, circular and small. Oh, okay. Now, I originally when I came up with this idea of making this, doing this twirling act that I'm getting ready to do. Get down. Get down. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Try not to make a mess. We don't need them yet. All right. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, since I don't have that, mm -hmm. I'm going to use the tip of my pinky. Oh. That's okay. being my fault. The smallest finger. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to do some deal here where I first I... Okay. The trick, of, the trick of the deal is you think, this is where I messed up. Yeah. I was, you know, getting ready to even them all out, but the deal is some of these are shorter than the other. Oh. So... The idea is to even them all up as much as possible from the tips on one end. Oh, okay. 
because when I twist, they all have to even up, measure up. Oh wow! To a um, certain point. Now, okay. I do it like this. Stretch them out as much as I can. I think I wish I had my device. Cool. And then I take my pinky. I put it here in the middle of them. To get as close as possible. Now you already got one that's kind of longer than the other. But when I'm done with the spin, it, it can, um, I can tuck it. I'm going to coil it anyway. Oh, okay. So, it's going to be painful at first. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. I got to twist it around oh, my pinky okay. wow. and get it going. Uh, the thing about it is I'm going to have to stick with it. So, oh, this okay. is really going to be... Awful. I was like, sure you could only use a key. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, yeah. there's a there's an end of these scissors here. Yeah. It can be cool. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay, so, yeah, we can do it like that. So we hold so it tight. This, this is about to, you about to turn this into a tail? Yeah. Oh, it's okay. It's tail here. So we and just spin it around. tail for the you one see? you just... Um, yeah, I just lost, oh. man. Oh, okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you basically the step. Wow. How, what I had in mind to do as far as the tail. Now, yeah. of course, I cut these. These are really long when I first started with them. Oh, yeah. But I cut them down to kind of actually be, you know, uh, the length of these tails here. Oh, okay. And I kind of wanted to go and mimic after the tail style of uh, the Swana here. Because mm -hmm. it's pretty cool, you know. Yeah. And again, I was going to make a cool tail that actually worked, looks, you know, pretty cool, believable. Yeah. It's going to be behind the cake. In most, most cases, it's going to be, you know, just right in front of it. But, oh, we. Here we go. So we're done. We're almost done with the twist. Oh, okay. Okay. Awesome. Now thing about it is I wish I had <laughs> a device to actually squeeze in the coils here, which I think I do. And what color? That was going to be like a black or a charcoal gray? Or yeah, the charcoal oh, okay. gray guy. Okay. going to be his tail. I'm going to um, put awesome. him here. going to be his tail. And... Um, I've already actually managed to try it out a little bit uh, when I was just actually just thinking of um, doing it. And uh, what I've done is took the coils here uh -huh. and uh, managed to take them all and like kind of insert them in the back area where a scale will be, you know, inserted. Oh, okay. And as long as they were actually squared up at the right angle with each other, they fit perfectly like a glove. Oh, wow. The thing is, that's why we have to have them all together. Some being shorter than others, you gotta kind of yeah. You know, like this point right here is going to have to go. Mm -hmm. Now, as you can see here, this is just the wiring of the tail. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I know it looks metallic, but you know, it's shiny. It's like, how's that going to work the tail? It's kind of like a <laughs> <laughs> cat with a robotic tail. Yeah. But what I was going to do, that's what I was going to What I was going to actually do is once I actually formed the tail, mm -hmm. these coils here, I was going to take, make an attempt to go over it with a uh, thin line of uh, Play-Doh here oh. to give it a uh, texture mm -hmm. of their fur. Oh, okay. Now, and that's, you know, actually taking the Play-Doh and having to paint it as close as we can to his, you know, his body, his skin, yeah. you know, his tone, yeah. and everything, so his fur. So here, this kind of takes a while uh, getting right, the coils right. to really, like, line up because... Yeah. It, um, they're really strong. These wires are strong. Oh, okay. And uh, you want to just basically get uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. it to line up as much as possible so you get inserted. Oh, Shit. Awesome. Yeah. yeah right. So now here's the problem. What's that? It's, it's, it's over. You know, you basically got this dude right here. Mm -hmm. So he's going to have to go. You know what I mean? They have them piking out like that. Oh, okay. Oh, that little wire piece hanging mm -hmm. out of it. Yeah. And see, in his case, what I'm going to do with this tail, I'm not going to even make it a tail where it's going to be able to come out and go back in. Yeah. Because under the circumstances, I need to make him a tail that's going to stick around. Oh, okay. So I want to glue that sucker in. Oh, so you going to All right. Yeah, I'm going to pick I mean, he's going to be a permanent. <laughs> yeah. Gonna and, a permanent. Well, and that's a glue one. What kind of glue is that you use again? It's actually just your common crazy glue. Oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Right up in here. Ooh, it's kind of in the breeze in there, man. Mm -hmm. As you can see, today we're in our safari mode. We'll get to move the tail. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> we're in safari mode like this. Boom. 
Yeah. The animals chirping and all that good stuff. Oh, definitely. So, yeah, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, outstanding! Display, yeah, man. real, real nice display here <laughs> in history and culture of, of like um knowing them, yeah, how they all interact and relate, and how it even shows their natural habitats of how they are. How they are? How the cats are? Yeah, the cats. <laughs> how the cats are. Yeah. And of course, you know, this, in my mind, this is kind of like the origins of the Thundercat, you know what I mean, with Thundera. Was oh, absolutely. Kicking, you know, Thundera basically had a lot of, <laughs> you know what I mean, uh, uh, warrioristic type cats in the beginning of their time. And, yeah. You know, I, yeah, hold the ladies up. Oh, I definitely am, um, yeah. Like I say, remember, I'm um, Thundercats growing up. <laughs> yeah, Thundercats is bomb. And I'm sitting here messing with yeah. these cats, which are irrelevant to my deal right now. Just, oh. The backdrop looks so bad. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna lay them here because they're tripping. Mm -hmm. Obviously, she don't want to hold on to a spear. Non-violence, non-violence. I get it. So let's do this. All right, man. So we're gonna continue to squeeze this in. Now here's the thing. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying not to do is like I gotta go after the example of one of these cat's tails. I'm gonna use my cutter as an example. I mean, I'm sorry, Juana. Yeah, his tail is actually thin the way it is. Oh. It's not thin, but it's not thick. It's not thick, but it's not thin. You get me? Yeah. I don't want this to be too thick, but by the time firing is done, mm -hmm. adding a coat of uh, play doh over actually for its uh, vector. Uh, okay. I'm actually making it just a little more fatter than what is intended. So oh. we have to remove some wire. Oh, okay. So now what I'm going to do is going to be crazy as I just complained about it. Yeah. I gotta uncoil. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Oh, it's man. It's a doozy. It's a doozy. Oh. See, because I just coiled that up and I just found that that's gonna be thicker. Yeah. So, we're gonna uncoil this, but you guys get the general idea of basically what I'm doing here. It's gonna be a nice little pretty deal when I'm done. <laughs> and I'm gonna be happy because my cat's gonna have a tail and his balance won't be off. Oh, good, good. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> you know what? As a matter of fact, I can use... Let me see, someone quivering in length over this way. I don't have to actually deal with that crap of them not being the same twist. Uh -oh. Maybe I actually right. have some over here from the new ties I got. Oh, uh, okay. Gonna be just as long. Let me see, I think a little longer than normal. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, man. Yeah, oh, amazing. Those, you know what I mean? So you, you got a thing for figures, man. What's your deal with this whole stuff? Well, I'll tell you, you know what? I think it's um, thing, huh? it's definitely something that I um, yeah, gives a real insight or like getting a, a, an eye opener about man, about the different, um, how I say, interest of um, yeah, between cats or thundercats, the modern marvels. Um, for me, I'd always say it probably was, um, I was real G.I. Joe, tactical. Yeah. yeah, definitely, yeah. That's some G.I. Big... Joe. Yeah, definitely Shoot, had a big man. fetish for yeah, playing with um the action figures and uh. You say you got a fetish for playing with the action figures. Ha <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah. Yeah, yeah I tell you, man, I said um yeah the Cobra head commandos and <laughs> okay. yeah. Using like Flint Spirit uh, Storm Shadow and yeah yeah absolutely. like that you know okay. Yeah, and I tell you, I said um I really did enjoy um I was like hoping like yeah maybe even get to collect some of the big um yeah i'd say action figures in both 12 inch size and um, gi joe's and commandos <laughs> i always thought that gi joe commando <laughs> uh, yeah was, yeah i always thought it'd be good storylines even for some of the movies that were shown on those oh yeah man hey uh, yeah we just think out of the box we just make them uh -huh. like uh you know storylines are great no oh, absolutely why is uh <laughs> you thinking they seem so they like so uneven. But anyway, mm -hmm. we just want to make sure we come with the right length. I'm gonna remove two of them, right. and maybe it'll be less thick. Oh, okay. I want to kind of get them as straight as possible in the beginning, uh -oh. so I can get a good takeoff on the bends uh, prior yeah. to twisting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so here okay. we go. You see. <laughs> yeah, man. Mm -hmm. So um. Definitely. Find this uh, storyline, man. What do you what do you, what do you what do you think about that comic? That's when he ripped that dude in half. Oh yeah, that's yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it looked like I'm the up here was getting into another scene where, um, where the let's see what's that? Um, 
the one here where um, this man here, this that, this that tiger, I'm um, the the orange one, right? This stuff, mm-hmm. this him as a human. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looked like yeah, he pretty much they say he's considered the one who. Yeah, it's they they trying to get him to remember who he yeah, is. Yeah, they're trying to wake him up too to remember. Yeah, to come over here and try to get this. Yeah, I mean, like you mm-hmm. said, with the complete opposites of he's him and his sister. See this adopted brother. Yeah, we hold on to the twist. Oh, we just spin okay. it around with scissors. Yeah, and it's basically twisting pretty nice here. Wow. Gotta have the strength in your fingers, man. Yeah. Gotta hold it down. Yeah. We don't mess around. <laughs> Hurry up yeah. and hit the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. So, so. Yeah, it looked like um, in here, it looked like um, yeah, the other brothers, his um, his step brothers, adopted brothers, actually um, appears to be um, trying to find him, rescue him, trying to put it all together to try to figure out what it is that's going on with his brother yeah, in the first place. Yeah, they're both in the sense of wake up. Yeah. Much. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Totally. And basically, they're both when they, as they both come to wake up, they see who's who and it's on, like Donkey Kong. Yeah. It's on. And they said something about Zenda. They said it is the mistress of the waters, the siren queen of rivers and lakes in the realm. Her name is Zinda. Okay. Yeah, Zinda's the. Yeah. Yeah, she's a Lynx girl. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. You know? Yeah. Great story ahead here. So, what we're gonna do is make an attempt here. Do what we wanna do. Uh, actually. Yeah, it appears to look like it's one of these scenes, um, yeah, the brother is um, going alone at this, um, in chapter four mm-hmm. of this scene, um, yeah, look no. like the one who had helped him get started, oh, okay, and here's the one, yeah, about Kayla, um, wow. here we have the end of his tale, mm-hmm. um, it actually fits, let me see what you can see here. It kind of like to go there. You know what I'm saying? Oh wow! Yeah. So, yeah. yeah but it's not gonna fit. Not it's not fitting. It's fit, but mm-hmm. I can hold it. But anyway, you guys, step. So, we're gonna take it now. Made his head pop off. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna um, check on. Hold on a second. Come on, man. You need your head on for the show. There you go, baby. Put it on. One nine live, one nine live. Okay, cool. Yeah. So you're there. He's yeah. there. So what we're going to do is um, make sure this is really tight. And... Uh, um, yeah, it looks like there's a scene here where my past two, there's a fight between two of the brothers. Uh, who is a cat? The blue one in yeah. there? Juana and uh, Tear. Yeah. They got into it. Wow. Oh, okay. So I began that whole rivalry thing. It just got crazy. Yeah. But yeah. Wow. I thought that was uh, Tear at first to actually stop him. That was actually Naka, his brother. Oh, okay. That's right. So they, they were into the altercation. Oh. There. So I'm going to zip here. Yeah. Thing in here. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm yeah. close it. As yeah. much as possible. Yeah, it says Ter was to return, but only with the Swana and his side, at his side by being as a Sanin as you are reckless. You you've laid our centuries old plans to waste. Wow. Yeah. I'm not gonna tell them. Definitely a lot, yeah. And mm-hmm. seems like he's consistently having dreams. Look like he's back and forth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, man. This is something. Mm-hmm. Right? Absolutely. Uh, we're biting this. We're getting it closed in. I know it looks weird. Uh, is he biting that? Uh, yeah, I was biting it. <laughs> I was getting it to actually go down. So, yeah, it can actually condense as much as possible so I can right. stick this tail off in the room side there, boy. Mm-hmm. Look here. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. 
Do you see the plastic on top of these wires? I actually tried to kind of flip off. Oh, uh, okay. I'm off a little bit of after a while. So anyway, yeah. what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take <laughs> this clay dough. And this is just your average little modeling clay. What I do, I took one and put it in one of the boxes here so it stay moist. I don't know how tough it actually is right now because I took this particular one out of the package. Oh, okay. I got others, but yeah. I kind of wanted to use the white so I wouldn't have any other colors kind of peek through as I'm painting it. Yeah. And um, I don't know what the heck I did with it. I don't even know what to do with it. Hold on, people. We haven't detected gold dick over two days. All right, look. It's in here somewhere. There it is. Overlooked it. So my grandmother had a term that she would say, when you were looking for something and you couldn't find it, yeah. and when you finally found it, it was right in front of you. Oh, man. She said, uh, there had to been a snake in a bitch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Heard that one from my grandparents yeah. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, man. Because if it had been a snake, uh, it would have bit me. Man. Now I looked in that tote like twice, I think, and couldn't even find it. What we're going to do here, this is my common little modeling clay here that you can make things with, stuff like that. Now, if, you know, I was thinking about it when, you know, this first kind of happened. Well, I keep saying it first kind of happened, but no, I'm just not, that's dumb. Because I just thought about it right now, it's dumb. Uh -oh. But I don't even have to actually, like, get off into, you know, covering up the wiring or whatever. I actually just made it feel like, like this. Yeah, yeah. But of yeah. course, modeling it so it would be really cool, believable. Yeah. But think about it, it, I don't know how it would preserve, what would be how it glaze it in crazy glue or something like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, Get it more yeah. of a stout, firm uh, texture. You know what? Yeah, you're probably doing it probably the way you had it the first time um, as an idea. Is yeah. probably the best uh, yeah. Yeah, Yes, so I was kind of thinking uh -huh. so too. But it's just, yeah, you know, it's, just, it's a thought, a thought. Yeah. Well, see, what we got here is um, I'm going to take this modeling clay here. I'm going to soften it a bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get it really nice and soft like dough. Batter as much as I can. Add a little hand warmth to it. And what I'm going to do is going to lay it out flat. And I'm wow. actually going to put our tail into its fold. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to cover it as thinly as possible oh, okay. where the not too much clay indicating like a thick clay. Yeah. I basically, I'm just gonna use the clay just as a covering, as a little, for like a little skin. Oh, okay. But then, being it's gonna, you know, gonna be clay, I can actually kind of go inside and yeah. as much as possible, give it a tail texture like the rest of the cat, you know, with the lines and kind of thing. And make it believable that I'm gonna paint it. Oh, okay, yeah. Now, the thing about it is like, it's just gonna be pa uh, painted clay. Mm -hmm. Why it's standing up, of course, it's not going to be a tail that I'm going to be using it to hold him up. He's going to be on the platform and um, that kind of thing, but it's just going to be there. So I was thinking, like, since it's going to be glued in permanently, mm -hmm. just, you wow. know, maybe like, um, if I glaze it in some type of crazy glue substance, it'll shine. You yeah. don't want that. Oh, okay. So, yeah, being that he's just going to be sitting up for display anyway, yeah. I'm going to kind of leave it like that. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. Know what I mean? Mm hmm. So we rolled this clay out. All right. And again, we're gonna see how this comes out. I hope they'll only be able to use white. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, I have all these different colors here, and this is pretty much the uh, oh, wow. amount oh, you wow. know, of clay it is. So oh, this wow. guy's got the white clay stick. Here. Yeah. Wow. They're, just, they're separate sticks. But you know, I don't. If I have to use more, which yeah. I shouldn't, because mm -hmm. what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flatten this out like a pancake. Oh, okay. Don't want to use a lot of clay, like I said before. But I need to cover the tail. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna cover it all the way. I'm gonna leave the tip actually open yeah. about this much, so it can be inserted with you know permanent stick. Okay. And just leave it coming out, you know, the way. Now, as I cover it with clay, I want to kind of form the tail the way I want it to be. Mm -hmm. Does not messing with it again, so it won't, you know. So I have to do it like I would have to cover it the way the tail is gonna be coming out of the guy. Yeah. So kind of how Swanus tail is, kind of like that look. Maybe to be diverse, maybe I can actually make it go on the other side. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's gonna enter here. Yeah. Maybe that was there. 
You oh, see that there? Oh, wow. But it's going to be yeah. covered up and stuff. So, yeah. So that's oh, what, okay. I, what I did. I'm going to take. I'm going to just cut more. Warm it up my hands. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, because it was stiff, man. Oh, okay. Set in there for a while. Wow. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah, always the wet nick or whatever. Don't have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So fine. man, yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, let's see. So that's pretty much one item you're fixing. Is there any other ones that you probably have to fix or correct on? Um, for like as far as the tell that you're um, getting straight with them, this particular character. Oh, uh, is there anything else I might need to fix? Yeah, as far no, as no. how you be about God, man. It's yeah. just hell. Oh, okay. And I hate that I lost it because no sooner I make this thing, I'm gonna find it. I already know. Oh, okay. But it's cool. Hey, yeah, Something to do, my friend. I want to tell now. Because <laughs> I want to put it on display, man. I don't want to have to just, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now. This clay is really hard. It's not hard. I'm sorry, just put it soft. Yeah. And it's hot. So, I did my job on it. But now, what we're going to do, we're going to roll it out just like this. And this is going to be, as you can see, it's not a way for me to actually lay the tail in. Mm -hmm. But what I'm going to do. I'm gonna use this tactic to try to spread it out as thin as possible. Oh, okay. Yeah. I want it thin anyway. Now, you see, you see it's actually on the table. Yeah. It's quite clay, so you probably won't be able to see it that well on the camera. Yeah. But, um, <clears throat> nonetheless, we got ourselves pancake. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do. I want to go just a little wider out because mm -hmm. mind you remember the clay is going to be thin anyway oh, okay. by the time i actually done spreading it out I actually fit the uh covering of his tail yeah it's going to lay thin anyway so here we go we're going to do it like this mm -hmm. right, i'm going to lay it in here and we're going to dent it now what i want to do is remember we want to go to the top of it let's keep this part exposed now let me just peel the play though okay. over it right. and this basically this is going to give me i'm only going to use as much clay as it takes to actually covering yeah. and then i'm going to actually just start condensing there's no way i'm going to take all this clay and okay. put it on here because it'll be too thick oh, right. see so, you now you got some areas where it's kind of breaking but okay because it's going to be yeah. and we'll wrap. this is going to overlap so what we do is we take here, I remember, folks, your boy Ty thinking out of the box. <laughs> he never done this. Uh, yeah. Let's see if it works. I think it will. They're gonna cover here. So this is all being done with wires and play doh, yeah, pretty much. And yep. yeah, that's, that's some nice creativity yeah. there of yeah, uh, being able to, yeah, now they do it. have a, like a well, I'm told there's a uh. The material, yeah, that will cover mm -hmm. this. But now, I'm actually gonna come in, compress the play over the wiring. Mm -hmm. Oh shit! So, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we gonna go uh, this way. Uh, yeah. Put those down. Right, all right. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna push it down. Uh -huh. Let's see, and uh, you know, kind of get a ring ring. No. Edge for the, the clay though. Now, my, again, we don't want to use all this clay because it's going to be too thick. So I got to kind of scratch away. Yeah, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. I think my head is actually mm -hmm. blocking this view. And then, right. and then we're going to condense. Oh, okay. Scratch away here a little bit. Mm -hmm. On the corners. And then and smooth over. Hold on. Now as we're condensing, mm -hmm. we're gonna roll a little bit because we're gonna see what our all, what every angle of this play is looking like. Let me take it off. Right. It looks kind of sloppy and tacky right now. Mm -hmm. Try something. All right. Take that off. I'm gonna keep this back up. Okay. 
two level, two down. Right, you see? Yeah. That's we going to do. Okay. Indent it as much as possible so it just oh. engulfs it. Wow. Well. I don't want to tell it if you pick in other areas. Got to well. do the clay down. Oh, okay. Break it down. But yeah. Yeah, so it's um like I'm using um play doh as far as that. It's like that's just something you came up on your own with. Is that idea with you? Yeah, I thought about it. I was like, wow, because with the play doh, you can it, it's durable. You know, you can at least form it what you want it to be. Yeah, and yeah. Then, and then in it, of course, you can edge up and make little cuts and make little details in the clay doh oh. if you want to. Yeah. And just do it lightly, where you don't have to damage the you know the yeah. wiring or anything like that. So now yeah. the important thing about this now, see how I put off the extra clay? Mm -hmm. Because the main thing you want to cover, you want to be able to cover the end thing, you know, the, not really no main part of the tail, just the entire tail. Oh, okay. So you want the tip to be believable to be, you know, the yeah. end of the cat tail. So I'm going to, as you can see here, it's kind of thicker there. Yeah. But what I'm doing is actually I'm kind of like slowly but surely working it down oh, to where okay. it actually gets a little thicker at the tail end. Yeah. The tip of the tail. And, you know, allow me to kind of pick it off mm. where it won't be as thick. So okay. this clay yeah. is actually, as I'm doing this here, it has to like kind of mold into mm. my wiring. Oh, wow. And then I have to uh, continue to work it down because it'll be less thick, as you see. Oh. You want it to be, uh, want it to be evened out for the most part. Yeah. So I'm pretty good up here. Pretty much got the beginning stages of the tail actually at the right length or uh, width. Mm -hmm. I kind of want that for the rest. So I got to squeeze and kind of work my way down with a slight pull. Yeah. Being that I don't tear the uh, plate off. Uh -oh. Once you tear it, if you tear it good enough, you're going to be doing a lot of fill ins, which is always good. You can pull a piece of this here that I have extra. Yeah. And just. Um, you know, patch it up. Oh, okay. And um, I was gonna say, when did you um start um, let's see, like to, like learning how to take characters apart and put like switching up, um, different heads with different bodies and arms and legs and weapons and all that kind of stuff too. <laughs> yeah. When would you when you begin doing that? I was uh, I was like about ugh, real seriously like maybe like thirteen. Oh wow. Yeah, I was thirteen. And I used to always you know want to make figures, but yeah, so I was thirteen years old. Oh okay. Yeah. I always, always kind of had an idea of like uh, maybe something that could make it look a little more, um, uh, like I'll say, a little more aggressive or a little oh, yeah. more attractive or a little more uh, attractive. But then mostly, um, I always targeted mostly in storylines. That's what, oh, or okay. you know, originated with me is you know my whole reason wanting to create stuff and getting that stuff because it was like a good storyline of a cartoon that you might have seen mm -hmm. that actually stuck to that storyline. Now, there's different episodes. As yeah. far as what I mean by storyline, I mean the the actual general creation of the um, the franchise. As far as the characters wise, mm -hmm. you know, that being one that's a cat lover and I always fall back on the story. You know, you see like um, only so many characters, like just for here, for example, for instance. You yeah. See, yeah. Pretty much a guy represents a cougar, one a panther, saber the tiger, lynx, cheetah, you know, and, and another um, two type of leopards, one panther, no brown leopard. Get me? Yeah. But what I'm saying is, like I just brought up earlier, you got the tiger warrior right there. That's somebody that's not amongst these guys. Well, saber tooth tiger. Oh, but then okay. you got your lion. Yeah. Who's not part of this deal, but it sure would look but cool if you're standing next to him. And still a cat. Yeah. Most yeah. Of all. So basically, my storyline is always, you know, I always try to get open minded about, you know, creating another character that wasn't part of the original. Yeah. You know I mean, you got a whole planet of cats, man. Let's let's get some let's get some leopards up there. Now I know I know Pranthro was kind of representing the leopards in the, in the sense of. Uh, the black leopard and the panther, you know, kind of thing, but yeah. let's get some like some detail, like you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Some details in the coat, and yeah. get a uh, let's get a uh, you know, you got Bengal tiger that came in there when Bengali showed up, mm -hmm. white tiger, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, eyes. yeah, beautiful man, yeah. So, just you know, yeah, that could a be female. a good one, that, that could be a really good one, <laughs> yeah, that would be cool right here because I was thinking if I can get one of these kind of look believable yeah. to be of a tiger's face, but you know, you have to have certain features in order for it to be believable too. Yeah, yeah. I actually seen a guy actually uh, online somewhere actually took a extra severe mm. and transferred me into like he's a black panther. Oh wow. 
They look pretty cool. Five kinds of wood favors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like a yeah, yeah, it's pretty much uh artistically done part. It was like painted, totally pit pitched out with with its gear though. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? Everything's still the same. It was cool. Oh, gotcha. It was cool. So we thought it is as you notice as I'm pulling this and like kinda of picking and pulling. Yeah. It's kind of thinning out, but it's you find yourself having a lot of excess clay at the end. Look at that. Oh wow! Because yeah. Because I'm motioning it out. Yeah, pretty cool. Oh okay. So but it feels right, you know. And my hands kind of accustomed into how it's supposed to actually yeah. feel as his tail at this point. Kind of got a good feel on it. Oh okay. Yeah. Yep. That's uh, that's awesome. So yeah, that's tell me, man. I mean, yeah. it's my you know my mom used to be a. Um, yeah. <laughs> One who actually just uh, ceramic, you know, with kilns and molds and stuff like that. Oh, okay. So, you know, we was always great oh. at some point. But I got serious about trying to make figures and my own toys, man, like, yeah. I'm 13, man. Oh, okay. Wow. Started getting, uh, doing little things, being responsible behind money. Yeah. And then they would buy my own stuff after a while, you know, instead of having to ask mom to always, you know, mom, can you give me this figure? Yeah. <laughs> Can you buy me this one? Oh, right. You, you see me like, you and these men, <laughs> you and these guys, you want to collect these toys? I was like, oh, it's cool. Yeah. She never, you know, she never tripped. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, That's but cool. was there like um, anybody you ever knew like that was doing that as much as you when you had first started? Anybody that was um, starting to... Yeah, as a matter of like, fact, I got to um, always just be a exag exaggerating on a family or whatever, or just myself, but mm -hmm. I got a first cousin, I mean, a Michael. Yeah. This guy actually is like into this big time but he doesn't i don't know if he made he doesn't really custom make stuff he likes to paint oh okay he would go to the stores and get your little common bags of army men yeah and he got these he's ex-military and stuff but he got these little figures i don't know exactly where he got them from it had to be some hobby shop or something. Mm. but they're little bitty soldier figures i mean i'm talking about these things are like micro oh wow about this big they're really small Wow. And they have different soldiers doing different things, holding different guns in different kind of ways or whatever, whatever. Commander soldiers, whatever. Yeah. What he would do is he would, he was getting those somewhere and he was actually taking each one of them and colony by by army by army, painting them different military outfits that represents different parts of the world. Oh wow. And he you know, he'd been all over the place. So yeah, well yeah. here you have Russia, China, Africa, oh, the United man, States. Oh, that's amazing. And so on, and that's just to name a few, but he was everywhere with the militia forces and on his scale Mm -hmm. It was like a, like a uh, little map that he had out that represented the planet. Oh. He had each one of the colony of army men over there. Oh, wow. So you have the rec room, you have the big old like map indicating the world and each one of the uh, oh, wow. militia forces in each zone accordingly. So it, it looked really sweet. Yeah. He uh, he would collect like gigantic Batman. And, oh wow! You know little stuff like that. We were kids going over there, and um, mm -hmm. sometimes you know he'll hand us some stuff if he has some extra stuff, or whatever. It's cool, man. It was pleasant. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, yeah, I think I'm good a... on this, man. I think I gotta. Now his tail may be just a little thicker, but I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I could actually condense it down just a little bit more. Yeah, that, that's something else about the yeah, about the military and the different that, that I've seen that much. And yeah, that, that's an amazing yeah, like say some like um story to like be told too, like America. That's something that sometimes a lot oh, yeah. of us don't know enough about is um. Well, you know, good. like um, all the different, yeah, like yeah. say military, yeah, yeah, countries and what they wear specifically. I mean, yep. that's a that's a lot of yeah, yeah. history in the making. Yeah, man. You know what uh, I mean? That's yeah. what I told him. You need to talk. You know what I mean? Just you know, be yeah. good there. Oh, absolutely. And explain basically how you actually do your figures. I mean, he'd be good. Mm -hmm. He'd be good for something like this, whatever. Oh, absolutely. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Yeah, man. That's good. So I'm trying to thin this out. And I've pretty much got, like, I think I kind of should roll it. Oh, okay. Feels a little better. I just don't want to get too close to the wiring where it exposes. Yeah. I'm thinking out of the clay. Because if it goes just a little thick on this tail, we can do that. It's actually safe. As you can see, it don't look that bad. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Pain and stuff like that. Oh, wow. You pop a, have a, I'm thinning it out here anyway. Mm hmm So... Yeah, man. <laughs> well, this kind of stuff too. I'm gonna tell you a story, but yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah, man. Good to I've, go, man. It's uh, crazy. Cause I've um messed around and uh kind of showed off on some uh, angelic warriors and stuff that I was making. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I've really gotten to where like I had. I have to be honest. 
I've introduced the you know the storyline of my um, Sons of the High Art oh, by okay. mouth like many of times that we've actually streamed. But the thing is, I've never other than creating one or two pieces or something like that, starting on some stuff, never really came through with the real creation of the storyline. But I will say this. Mm-hmm. That's gonna. That's an original for me, baby. And uh, it took me some time to actually figure out how I wanted these um, angelic warriors to look. No. Oh, because it's yeah. all too much of a cop out just to give them like no shirts, and long hairs, and wings. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, we can make them a bunch of pretty boys. It's cool. Mm-hmm. Make it like that. Give them some warrior tats, something like that. But I was thinking like, really, 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 yeah. get out of the box with creation of oh, an angel. War Angel, whatever, just yeah, adding stuff. I mean, I'm just gonna like I'm trying to blow some minds. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I so mean, it's gonna yeah. take me a minute to actually really get it. Uh huh. But uh, yeah, man, it's going along. Yeah. So yeah, yeah with the crazy. War Angels, yeah, yeah, like that, man. yeah. You got I got an idea of like um, it'd be something that you set up like I'm almost so like the way you have this character, these characters. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've already created some of the um. The other side, you know what I mean, like the, the enemies, like some like fallen angels and stuff. I've already started the storyline. Oh, okay. Now I brought a couple of men actually showed off where I was at with it, you know, starting it, but I just haven't finished up. Mm. Yeah. And most of you started creating the bad guys. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I just had just started getting them in first. Oh man. And uh, no particular reason, just started on one, sitting at work one day and just started pushing away, yeah. adding, chopping, adding, gluing, and painting. But yeah, man, uh, I think, honestly, let me see. Mm-hmm. There's a little roll here, but yeah. Yeah. Good to go. So. Yeah, so that one's going to well, be painted um like this charcoal or the silver, like, no, not silver, charcoal gray, like the darker smoky gray. What's the color that you use specifically yeah, for that one? But yeah. See, that's interesting because I can, I can see a lot of colors in this coat. Yeah. And it looks like it would just be a simple gray oh simple okay it's not you can see no. brown in it you can see mm-hmm. a couple things so i may have to make the paint just a little bit oh okay to actually get the right right tone now see when i actually rolled let me pull up this tape i'm actually still pushing this play doh down see it gave me a little more tip oh yeah. this is what we're looking like right now it's not as thick but yeah. Going along. Oh, what do you think, baby? Look at that. <laughs> Ooh. Hey. Take a little wire. Getting some ideas. Get a little bit of this here. Play doh. Wow. You know what I'm talking about, man. Hey. See, my whole thing is, man, you got to see it before you see it. Yeah. You know how that is. Oh, absolutely. Faith walk. So, I love creating these figures, man. Yeah. I like messing with stuff. It's just got the point, like, you know. If you think about it, like when you were a kid, you ever had that one toy that you had you liked a lot? <laughs> oh, absolutely. And you yeah. broke it? What did oh, you do? Yeah. You cry, or you kind of got mad, you were upset, disappointed. Yeah. yeah. And you, the disappointment came from you not knowing what you're going to be able to do to get it fixed. Yeah. You know, you just want that toy. You're not even thinking about, oh, I'll just go get another one. Yeah. When you actually have that one thing that you like, and it's damaged some kind of way, you like, darn it. Oh, yeah. You know, I wish for this to have never happened because I like that toy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, as a kid thinking that, first your reaction is like, mm, you know, you start whining, whatever the case is, however you react to it. Yeah. But now as an adult, as I start messing with this stuff, man, it's crazy. Like I said, I lost this dude's tail, so yeah. I didn't even cry about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's going to make another one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. We're, we're all growing up now. No, oh, absolutely. But yeah. we still like our toys. We still love our toys. Oh yeah, yeah I'll you tell gotta, you. Gotta get the cat team. Yeah, I definitely was there when I went through that space. I can remember. Yeah, I definitely was managing <laughs> to find a screwdriver or two and right. Was, yeah, I'm looking at a few of them. Intriguing, huh? Yeah. Take, take your robot apart and <laughs> build some stuff. But you mind you say, dude, I'm gonna be making some aircrafts and stuff. I got a lot of stuff that's getting ready to go down. Oh yeah, that's outstanding. Yeah, yeah, can't yeah. wait. Because you know your Thundercats, man. You know that's why I'm rooted. Yeah. They need some vehicles and some aircraft and stuff like that. So I got some stuff in the mix. Oh, okay. So you might find it just a little interesting. You know yeah, I mean? Thundercat vehicles. Yeah, that yeah. will be because I figure, you know, they, they think that they can run <laughs> all mm-hmm. day. I mean, they got a lot of stuff. But, you know, even with like other storylines, it's like uh, Earth Elite. You know what I mean? They need some vehicles. It's crazy. Yeah. Got some storylines where, you know, got some action teams. Everything's not 
something that somebody else has already done, but I got a couple things I'm actually getting ready to get in the mix of. Right, so man. yeah, yeah. We're almost done here. I'm actually getting a little worn thin. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty darn good, darn it. Uh -huh, it really is. If you look here, you got stuff to tail now. Yeah. Kind of textured out, basically ready to go. Yeah. And uh, if you compare it to the backside here, right now, and in, in its reality mm -hmm. and truth, I had in mind to be a little thinner on this, but I think we're good. Um, okay. I'm honestly feeling that it went well in the comparison of me having all that clay that I had right there that I was getting ready to foil it in, and thus actually taking two of those wires out. Oh, wow. Okay. You see? Yeah. That actually gave me a little more, uh, less thickness in the wiring alone before I even added the clay. Oh, wow. So now, knowing that the clay was going to make it thicker and kind of give me a little... Time and getting it to be thin the way I want it. Uh, get those wires out, so we're good. Oh, okay. so actually, we're coming together with this form. I'm gonna be adding it in a minute. Now, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna paint it once I add it on him. Oh, okay. Because Let's the go. thing is, I want it to be um, in its position as I'm going over it, and I can actually. Uh, not have to worry about one side getting damaged mm -hmm. from being laid down into the other, whatever, whatever. So I'm gonna glue it in them, let it sit in there for a while. I'm gonna do a little bit of talking. Yeah. I'm gonna rub alone for a little bit. Oh, alright. Little, little bit. Mm -hmm. nah, but uh, I'm just wondering, what do you think, man? Should I unbox these two too? Uh, you know what? I kind of want to recreate something. With, I don't, you know what? Yeah, that I might be know. that might be something good. It's, yeah. The thing about it, like I could do that, but uh -huh. then. I don't want to just let them hang on the wall. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like them value. I don't know. Yeah. Mean I got these two. I just want those platforms, really, man. But then, you know me. If I'm gonna unbox it, I gotta figure out a way mm -hmm. that I can just use it. Be really, really helpful for display. Oh heck yeah. Um. Yeah. That's good to go. Yeah, man. So mm -hmm. we're good here. Nakaru has his tail. Mm -hmm. nice. I know that I make this. <laughs> I'm gonna find his tail. It's gonna pop up. I'm gonna be like, there you are. Wow. And then, but being that it's actually gonna be permanently in him, there's only, like I told you about, using crazy glue with small spaces. Yeah. If I decide to actually reattach his real tail, mm -hmm. Maybe have one chance of pulling that out to uh -huh. actually do one more glue uh -huh. for anything to actually legitimately stay inside and not not be uh, forced to come out, you know. Yeah. So I do this by chance. If I want what I want, and I thought it'd be interesting to show you guys basically how my improv really knows no limits. Now somebody would say, you know, that's all that simple. That's cool. You know, whatever, I could do that. And you're very right about that. You could do this. Oh, yeah. You could do this. But this is just, uh, kind of thought about, like, you know, what else would I have done for a tail? Mm -hmm. And I remember I had the ties. I was like, I could do this. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So here we go. <laughs> so we're going to see what it looks like. Okay. Tail in the back here. And, uh, but I can see it. I'm not sure what the angle is. Oh, yeah. You know. Definitely. But it looks believable. Yeah. No, okay. It looks believable. It's like a... Yeah. Yeah, so basically... Let me see here. Knock it over here. I want to try to go for a little inner look. Mm, okay. But, you know... Yeah. You'll see the finished product when I'm talking about. Oh, gotcha. There we go. Better here. Tell me what you think, man. You like that? <laughs> you like that? I feel like I got a certain level of tolerance for him, but yeah. Level yeah. Tolerance. yeah man, get you a big cat, dog. Get you a lion. Hey. A lion for a pet. Hey. Hey. Domestic calicos, and those Siamese and mm. tabby tabbies. I love them, though. I love them, man. <laughs> you know, it's so crazy because 
you look at these cat warriors and these cat figures that kind of represent humans, you know. Yeah. They standing upright, whatever, whatever. Yeah, okay. You know, they got the legs, they got the arms and stuff, you know, and the hands. Yeah. And it's articulately done, articulately done, and it's pulled off because, you know, in my study as a vet vet, you had a, um, you know, we dealt with cat cadavers. Oh. And you find a cat, in the comparison to most animals, are actually built most like humans. Oh, wow. But they have clavicles like humans and not scapulas like a dog. Oh, wow. Uh, their actual legs and their arms are built for being able to actually go forward and out and wide mm-hmm. for climbing and hugging and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Oh. They're real durable. Oh, okay. um, They actually are able to contract uh, diseases that are similar to humans as well mm-hmm. that only apply to their feline gender, feline kind, uh, where a human, yeah. you know, sick with, an, for example, for HIV type of deal, oh, where wow. a feline will actually get, you know, get actually sick with FIV. Oh, wow. So I say all this to say they have a lot of common ground and similarities to humans anyway. So to see them standing upright? Yeah. It's no shock to me. It's all good, man. I love wow. it. Wow. Yeah. You lay that sucker out, man. You get built just like a person almost. <laughs> Amazing. You know, sound like, and when, you know, the ones that be late night outside your window when they be communing or whatever they're doing in the bushes, they sound like little kids, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These kids yeah. outside under my window. Go home. <laughs> yeah, man. Wow. Yeah, yeah man. man. Are we good here. <laughs> yeah. Say one thing I said about like about cats. They do keep away the rat. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, and oh, yeah. many other little rodents out there. Cats keep away a lot of things, brother. Yeah. Away a lot of things. <laughs> hey, but uh, what you guys think? All right, pretty cool, right? Dan Winston. Hey. Brilliant. hey. He's a, uh, he makes a number of things, man. A lot of like uh, horror, like toys and stuff. You know, Stan Winston's creature. Oh, wow. This is basically, that's it right there. You know, Realm of the Claw is actually just like a uh, part of that whole series, that whole get down he's doing. Oh, okay. And it's uh, awesome, man. Oh. I love detailed deals. For the most uh, part, you know, I'm into the three and a half inch figures. Yeah. But in my create, mostly just in my realm of creation. Uh-huh. Uh, but, man, I get down with all kind of stuff. Like, you know, I got a couple of uh, bigger figures that are uh, some random warriors I happen to find. Oh, okay. And it's a random toy pool. Of course, you know, you start thinking of characters that they can represent or they represent already. Yeah. And that you can convert them to look like with just, a, you know, a few uh, alterations. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what it's about, man. It's fun. Oh, okay. And once you actually start doing all that kind of stuff, then you start actually saying, man, I can create a guy who actually... You know, I want to. I want to make. A, I want to make a rock band. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna take some figures. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make a guitars. Yeah. I'm gonna make this dude's on bass. And oh make yeah. A little drum kit. You know what I mean? I'm gonna make. You know. So. No, absolutely. It's whatever, man. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. Oh, okay. Clothing yeah. on, giving the gods look, whatever. Yeah. Color the hair. Whatever. Oh, absolutely. And as they as they're a rock band. You turn around, you have them as warriors in some kind of token at the same time. Oh. You know what okay. I mean? Yeah. And. uh yeah, man. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to ignore that. And then we got, uh, I think we're going to go ahead and roll with it. Yeah, okay. As a, as a tail, mm-hmm. you, so thick, I think we can get believable length of this width. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Fly it here. Oh, okay. And I think, uh, it's good. Oh. Good. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my insertion here. But now to think about it, it doesn't have wiring. It's, it's a little um. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the one I coiled over in the first place. And I'm gonna use it to kind of thicken out. Okay. Well. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna go in here now. I'm gonna apply it. Take and it's a little too thick. Okay. We got it. We got it. Yeah. Yeah. So what we're we gonna do here? Like, give me a little something, man. Oh, uh, all right. Hey. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I love you too. Cool. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Okay. So anyway, yeah. um, a little more edging, 
think what I want to do is before I paint it, I gotta give it a little bit. Yeah, man, okay. oh, now, awesome. the thing about it is I had uh, all I needed something tomorrow and kind of edgy mm. edge. So maybe a little spit.